Welcome back, everybody. UGT Network, Undeniably Good Time Network, Abomination Vaults, Episode 2. Uh, when last we left our heroes, they had, uh, well, um, trekked here in the middle of the night to investigate the strange glow of the lighthouse looming over abomina the abominable gauntlet keep. Um, the abominated vaults. The abominated vaults, exactly, exactly. And uh, only to be trapped there by a ravenous cloud of wisps, which... Uh, cornered them in this mysterious ruins, uh, held back by some undiscovered unknown force. Uh, we did have a uh, brief headache happen by Mocker walking through the doors uh, where you are struck with a hole in your vision and a hole uh, possibly going all the way through your head, not certain. Um, it but, was the uh, one thing I wasn't expecting. A strange, mysterious curse seems to have fallen on our friends, uh, courtesy of the woe given by Dungeon Speedrun. Don't worry, that'll have Long and far-reaching consequences, I assure you. Yeah, I don't like the fact that you said you had more plans for that, like you were extending your woes into like their own cinematic universe. <laughs> <laughs> the woe cinematic universe. Yeah, I just whoa, just, man. <laughs> wait, whoa, part whoa. two. Whoa. whoa. The abominating. Starring, uh, what's his name? Absolutely. The guy. Well, you know Chris Pratt's going to be in there. No, no, the guy with He's the messed up nose, the, the wow. 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 Oh, Wilson? That's him, Owen Wilson. Wow, 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 wow. wow. I think we're doing Stop. That. We're yeah. not at the pre-show. What are we doing? I don't know. Sorry. We need to go for it. Um, but uh, why don't we go around the table, actually introduce <clears throat> ourselves. Uh, who are you? We'll go, we'll go left to right. Go ahead and tell us about your character, Jen. Uh, Altamak, Maka Thorngod. Uh, very, very excited to be here, or at least I was until I was cursed. Uh, I am a, a human thaumaturge here to... Um, discover the meaning of life. The meaning of life is actually what I say it is, and I'm always right because it works. Yes, it works. Right. Bobby, I'm playing Calbum. Calbum's here because uh, he heard there was an, an abominated vault, and uh, if he knows anything about abominated things, it's because they, uh, they're, they're like cryptids and they're owned by the government, and there's mist stuff that's controlling your mind, and that's why he's here. He's going to find out what they're not telling you in the newspapers. Man, if, if Calvin ever somehow makes it onto a Starfinder game, man. <laughs> there, He's there. a gnome. He could live that long. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> it was all aliens. Drevin Sorrel, a nearly seven foot tall great knoll, dressed in full plate and adorned with symbolisms of Saren Ray. A paladin, the pious puppy. <laughs> Picked He's the up, best boy. AKA the pious puppy. <laughs> picked up as a literal puppy from the woods and raised by the Serenites here to cause property damage. <laughs> On and purpose. only property damage. But who could he get mad other at types him. of damage? <laughs> Just look at that face. Exactly. Who's a good boy? <laughs> Howdy, folks. Uh, just here taking a gamble as usual. Uh, Corwin Elvashti. No relation. Actually, there is probably. I don't know. Grandparents are weird. Anyway, uh, just kind of. You know, your average Otari surveyor. Lumberjacks get to do the heavy lifting, and I make sure that they're not going to go out there and die. I mean, usually I'd look on ahead to make sure that the doors weren't trapped like the bridge seemed to be, but, well, Drevin here's a bit of a rush, seemingly, today. So, uh, no surveying, <laughs> as it were. I surveyed the door. So, uh... Speaking of which. Yeah, well, yeah. The, the fifth member of our party, uh, Bryn, uh, playing Nil, is not here today. Um, but uh, the rest of you are. And uh, Drevin, uh, last we checked, took a running leap across a freshly broken bridge to careen through a pair of double doors, whereupon uh, he startled the occupants of this room. I had, uh, possibly we leave uh, off with doing uh, this? blank yeah. stairs yeah, for everybody else behind. Uh, so this is a great time, actually, to roll some initiative. We were doing this all week. We, all just, week. we took a break during the pre-show, and that was it. Don't I'd take the them lies. to the orthopedics clinic, get braces for their wrists, and, you know, but, man, they're devoted. Absolutely devoted. Ooh. All right, we're gonna hey, leave nice. that there. Hey, nice. Well, we're gonna sweep around this way. So, why don't you tell me how Corwin went? Uh, Corwin's a bit astonished here that Drevin just full leaped twenty feet through a door and landed on the other side perfectly fine. Oh, uh, that's a nat one in astonishment. Okay, <laughs> uh, uh, that is a total of a twelve. 
just rogue Holy things. Just crap. in case. Plus just, 11. Just Pass. investigator yeah. things. Just investigator things. Nine and incredible initiatives. Well, uh, well hang on a minute here because Saiyan Fox coming through for uh, to, to kind of provide a bit of a boost there. The session of Abomination Vaults, the target of help is derp. Two hero points and one bless. I give this for three reasons. One, it's derp. Yep, exactly. Two, I don't want the cleric to die this time. Uh, he's a paladin, but, you know, if all Same good, thing. all good. He's legally cleric if, if you talk to the church. <laughs> Three, in this campaign, I'm going to help the paladin of Sarai. Okay, never mind. He doesn't want the cleric to die. He's going to help the paladin of Sarai. I get it. I get it. All right. Well, man, two hero points and a bless. So that's and this was from who? This, Saiyan. and this is going to be from Saiyan Fox. And I'll pass it down that way. Uh, I think I actually should pass everything this way this then. That's, that's yeah. Well, maybe I need, I need to get like a, we gotta I need get, get like a long move, grabber. If I have like one of those big yeah, yeah, long grabbers, I mean. especially yeah. if it telescopes, I could like yeah. put out there and then I could reach all. Like the I can way. tell you from sitting in that seat for like three hours straight, you gotta get your legs moving Fair sometimes. Enough. I just poke you. It's fall asleep. Ah. Don't knock the camera. Fluid <laughs> motion. Nothing will stand in my way. Rage and fury. The red veil descends. Ooh. Ooh. Those sounds like one of those sounds like Draven. <laughs> They both sound like Drevin. Uh, speaking of Drevin, what was his initiative? I got an 11. Okay, so your normal roll was your critical failure. Who wants to go I first? got a 6. No, I got a 12. Yeah, he got a 12. Jeez. I'm ahead of him, and I, I rolled a, a nat plus, 1. I have a plus 5. Okay. Yeah, he's not fast. <laughs> normal, normal stuff. High wisdom, hyper, and expert proficiency. Well, what's Calvin doing? Calvin is going at a 21. 21, there we go. Something guy. respectable. Yeah. And how about you? I'm also going on a 21, and I'd like to take the liberty of going first. Being Absolutely. That Was it okay with that? <laughs> uh, she has a higher dex for me than he, uh, He's got a higher dex than me anyway. All right, yes. well. I'm pretty um, sure I have a higher I everything had than you, I actually anticipated no this working physically out this yes. way, but, you know, well, here, here we are, I suppose. We've got the pack of boys. Oh boy. Um, so, uh, Yikes. you hear kind of a startled shout. Um, Mocker, uh, the we'll see Drevin kind of careening across the gap, um, and you kind of hear startled like, what the hell you? But it's sort of in undercommon. So, do you speak undercommon? I do. You're one of the ones that speak undercommon. So do I. Uh, you kind of say, what was that? Quick, get him! Is kind of what you'll hear uh, come wafting out of the door. And um, uh, inevitably, uh, you can't really make out too much else uh, aside from just sort of a, a decently well, I'd uh, actually know, actually a very, very di gloomy interior. It's nighttime. There's no sunlight to help you out here. It's okay. So, but uh, the gates of Gauntlet Keep yawn like a maw ready to devour Drevin as he leaps through it. Uh, into the darkness. I've lost all my central vision anyways. I'm just doomed. Yeah, you're, just, you're just a little astigmatic. You've got a little hole in your vision. You're not really sure what that's there for. It doesn't seem to be going away. Uh, Drev? I think that was a bad idea. But, like all bad ideas, I'm gonna emulate it. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna back up and run and go leaping across to follow him. Alrighty, so if we look here, you're on the edge of the bridge, so you're gonna take an action to back up, and then it's yep. gonna be two actions for a long jump. Give me that athletics roll. <laughs> That's what tiggers do best. Nothing like the thaumaturge going, that worked for you, it'll work for me. 16. A 16, I do believe that's a 15 foot gap. Uh, so you can jump and then I don't even think you have to catch an edge. I think that's actually good enough. You're going to be able to land right on the threshold of the door next to Drevin and haul yourself in. Uh, but that's going to be all three of your actions. Saiyan Fox again. Man, he got he's propping <laughs> you all up. Hero point for our gnome wizard. And to clarify, I meant I was going to help a paladin of Sanray in a campaign I'm in. Ran out of space for the last message. Ah, Fair okay. There is a character clear. limit. It all <laughs> becomes clear. All right, well, pass that. Does that mean you're trying to kill the cleric in your other campaign? Duh. <laughs> you know. All clerics. Reverse mistake. strike. You missed. Did I? <laughs> Whoa. Uh, Bookcase collapses. I mean. <laughs> yeah. With um, a slide whistle. Did I fire five shots or six? Okay. So. Mm. It's a movie and the mag's bottomless. So that athletics roll is just not going to happen for Callum. He is much smaller. Actually, but there on. is a rope attached to me. Is there? Yeah. He well, did we... jump across with a rope, but he hasn't had a chance to tie it off yet. So, I mean, I don't know how, how confident you're feeling in your friend. Wait, so you left an edge of the, uh, a so one side of the rope on our side yeah. and then yeah. jumped over? Yeah. Oh. Ropes are 50 wow. feet, and I'm not jumping 50 feet. 
do I still need, I would still need to like roll an athletics check or something to climb over that rope. How what would we? Well, basically, what I could do is if you pick up the rope and you try the jump and miss, you will then be hanging by the rope, and you could rely on Drevin to pull you up, or you could try to use your own athletics to climb up. That's going to be how I'm going to. I'm going to assume that's going to work. Uh, all right. I'm going to hold my action until his turn. Very good. Uh, but I'm going to pick up that, that the end of that rope and just pull it taut. So if I need to use a, an action, I'll do that, but I'll hold my other two. Sounds good. Drevin is there with the rope tied around his waist, and he are, you are holding the other end of the rope. So that's that's kind is of Is that an, an action. action of a waist yeah. or well, a waist do you, do of an action? Want, one action, prep the rope. Second action, action ready, ready, ready to, to get across with an athletics check and assist me pulling him. Long jump's two actions, but I'll let you use... Um, I'm gonna I, I'm I, I'll let you my, ready a climb so my, that when he hauls you, you can climb up the rope. Will yeah, that work? So, so my, my, the thought is that I'm just going to like lean on this rope and he's just going to go yoink yeah, I'm just, and yoink me across because I weigh like <laughs> 25 pounds. Yeah, you're like, probably I'm, lighter than I'm the rope, actually. Totally <laughs> yoinkable, as it were. All right, um, that sounds like a plan. So that's, yeah, that's my... Well, let's go ahead and pan on up to take a look at what this actual room looks like that you all find yourselves in. Um, this is unmistakably a, a, an entry hall. It's quite large. The roof has caved in over the centuries in multiple areas, creating uh, mounds of dirt and debris and greenery, which has since grown from that debris. Uh, so it is quite rough terrain going over. The entry hall kind of stretches out beyond you. You see some doors, which again look in horrible conditions as the interior hall has been open to the elements for a long, long time. Um, Mocker, now that you're in here though, you can sense, uh, you've got that psychometric resonance that you're attuned to. Your pendant starts to kind of vibrate. Uh, There's something a long time ago happened here and it was violent and it was very, very powerful. I sense there's evil been done in this room. It's not good, not at all, not at all. Um, but the uh, the areas around there, there are numerous carvings on the walls which have ver- been worn away by the passage of time and apparently overcarved by other denizens who have since moved in here, left. Then new denizens came, carved more stuff on the walls, they left or got kicked out, and this cycle seems to have happened a lot in this room. Um, Evil signs that abound. Um, it's like the 34th Street wall in Gainesville. It's where like the like 34th four Street wall. inches of paint. paint. It's just yeah. straight paint yeah. on the graffiti wall. Cool. Yeah, exactly. Peeling off the top. Well, uh, there is, however, going to be the, the chittering screech of uh, the current occupants of this room. Uh, looking up, you will see what appear to be three of more of these blue mitlit gremlins in the area, and they are poking and prodding at what appears to be a giant white fleshy worm. And they're kind of moving it with these little tiny fork looking things between a little track that's been dug out through the mounds of dirt here. But they're all looking at you, and they start kind of shrieking, uh, intruders, intruders! And then they turn to the this giant maggoty-looking thing and say, go, get him, get him! And then the white head of the maggot will rotate towards the both of you, and the legs will start clittering, chattering as they move towards you. Uh, one of these gremlins is going to uh, rush forward. And let's go ahead and scroll this up this way so we can kind of where we, there we go perfect ah there we go that's the scale we need right there all right yeah big rooms are a, a bit fun to deal with here big rooms are a bit fun to deal with here. there we go and uh he's going to uh clamor over the rough terrain he's in to about there and he's going to haul back and hurl a rock and it uh, looks like Altamox going to be the closest Hmm. That's definitely out of that first range increment, so that's going to be an eight. Altamach doesn't even notice. <laughs> the rock kind of clatters a few feet in front of you and skitters that way. I'm really Offering. distracted. Crits Kalbum in the background. And he's <laughs> going to wave his fork menacingly. Uh, we'll then go to uh, the uh, another one of these uh, mitflits is going to uh, clamor up 
to the top of what appears to be a ruined staircase uh, from which he's going to pull what is a kind of a makeshift dart, and he's going to fling that mocker's way as well. It's just a sharp stick. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a carved, balanced, sharp stick. Thank you so much. <laughs> this one is going to fly a bit more true. 24 to hit. Mm, ow. Digs into you for a point of damage. Wait. Ow. Like that might have broken the skin or something. That kind of hurt. It's a splinter. And Dang, uh, mosquitoes. he'll use his last action to kind of duck amongst the rubble, the rubble to take some cover. Uh, and then the massive maggot is going to use all of its movement to charge across the gap and get that far. Maggots I'm impressed. Are, I hate maggots. They, they're like, <laughs> super gross me out. So these ones are actually funny because they have a little face. I don't want to talk to about it. Maggots don't have faces. They're Stop. they're funny. Ugh. Ugh. hate them. Oh okay. my god! No! Yeah, he's got a little face. <laughs> His <laughs> eyes are all buggy. He's just a little guy. It looks really derpy, actually. Yeah. It does. <laughs> he's just a little guy. It, you it, hate What's going on? I it don't probably know. doesn't happen much down here in Florida, but up in North Carolina in the clay, you could be digging and just find like half an inch long maggots of like beetle larva. Oh, that's lovely. And they're, they're just like big, thick. Yeah. They'll, they'll bite you too. This one's not like happy. person size. No, don't like it. No. I uh, I'm glad I don't live there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never had a, any any problems with North Carolina until you told me that. <laughs> Sounds hard, awful. I'm not going there. Hard pass. <laughs> They're great chicken feet. Gross. This last mitt flit is going to uh, kind of crawl up on the dirt here toward the wall, but stay careful, readying for another dart to be thrown out. Oh, that's the smart mitt flit. Let my friends go first. All right, Corwin. Uh, Sounds so like me. You, you hear uh, the, what appears to sound the sound of, I mean, not really battle being joined. Nothing really happened, really. I hear Marco, ow. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> kind of an annoyed sound, but uh, what do you want to do? Uh, hey, Drevin, you going to be able to secure the other side of that rope? Eh, should be fine. Well, hold on. I'll get it on this side. Though we got a way to climb over. Just take it from me then. Uh, if you want to help me here, well, I mean, he, I, there's a lot of length that you have to work with on this rope. Yeah, fair. Well, the thought I had was I'm going to pull out a python and go to secure the rope on our end, and then he can secure it on our end, and then he can just use it to climb over easily without having to worry about jumping. Sure. So now this is where we get to talk about uh, a nice little mechanic I decided to invent for this called supplies. So rather than keeping track of how many pythons and hammers and hatchets and wedges and wire spools that you're all carrying, I created something called supply, which is you have 10 supply when you go into a dungeon. If you're going to a dangerous level of the dungeon, you have to use it to explore, or at any time you can just say, I wanna do something with some cool tools, which is part of the supplies. And so for this case, you can spend a supply and that rope will be perfectly secured. All right. Uh, okay. How many actions do you think that's going to take? Um, to hammer pythons into stone and make securely tie rope to it. Because corn is particularly good, I'm going to say he is going to uh, be able to do that in only a single turn. Okay. That's what I was going to say. I'm up to three actions was my intention was pull it out, hammer it in, make sure it's secure. Yep. There you go. And uh, with Calvum able to go across here. Actually, I've got to put all these guys up here. So I'm going to do that. Oh, he looks like a little dune monster. Oh, in that, he looks cute. <laughs> what do you mean you don't like no, the weird no, little face? No, he looks, he looks that, gross in that. That yeah. looks nasty. That. that is exactly what they look like when you pull them out of the ground. This is, this is oh, good. There you go. This is good. I think the mitt flit looks worse than the other thing. That but is Satan's Google eyes, and that is cute little he moon man. He looks like a little just a dude. Yeah. He's got his uh, All right, Drevor, little visor. What you doing about uh, what you doing about these little this potentially adorable, potentially horrifying looking thing? <laughs> it's it's a. Uh, I'm uh, just gonna ignore pretty much everything happening in the room and just take the rope and tie it like around part of the shattered door. Okay, sounds good. Uh, do you want to give me a, uh, what would this be? Uh, probably thievery, right? For working that. Crafting. Yeah, thievery, crafting. Crafting. crafting or Your thievery. Choice. Either one. It's I'm not gonna a high go difficulty. to attempt to do that Survival and then maybe? realize it's probably easier for me just to hold it. Sure, you, you can are, do that too. You're a big sturdy man. I'll tell you what, I'm or, not trained in either of those and I have zero dexterity. Also, there's nothing really convenient to tie it to. The door frame and the door itself look very waterlogged and damaged, and you're not sure you could easily find. It would take you some time to find a good, good place to do this without some kind of expertise. Have you seen that the act of barely balanced where they like he like goes across the the tightrope and it's just the one dude just kind of harnessed to it? I haven't seen it, but I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So you're kind of doing that. You just like put it over your shoulder and just lean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
So, so I guess I'll can... just be holding my turn acting as a, a ballast. Sure. So you'll just, uh, just you want to go on hold? or do Yeah, you wanna... I'll just be standing there holding the rope waiting until everyone's across. All right, sounds good. Mocker, it looks like you're up. Uh, so Mocker knows exactly what these mitflit things are, but that thing is unfamiliar to him. So I'm going to take a minute to try to uh, use uh, my esoteric lore to figure out what that thing is. Sure. Go ahead and give me an esoteric lore check. going to be a 19 on the die for a total of a 26. Solid. My God. Okay. Solid. Well, uh, it's uh, this is definitely a critical success. Uh, it's a giant maggot. Um, these things are big, fleshy insect, adolescent insects that will eventually turn into some kind of large, full-scale adult insect, possibly a giant fly, possibly a giant beetle, something of that nature. But... Um, it, at, at the moment, it is primarily driven by hunger because its job is to eat as much as it can possibly get it hold of at, before it goes and turns into its adult form. Um, you do notice that it's very fleshy, uh, so it's probably pretty easy to hit. does not look well armored at all, although it does look massive, so it probably has a lot of health. Um, and you are So something that would be, uh, that you actually what would work really well for this, you have a pouch of salt. Ooh. That you could go and scrape <laughs> along your blade that you think would definitely uh, work well on this salt. Oh, my worm. rock salt. <laughs> um, so he'll take out uh, his raw, his little pouch of rock salt and pour it over Naji, and uh, he will uh, get ready uh, for this thing. All right. Uh, so you are. Um, You've esoteric lord. You, you're ready for it. Uh, you do have two actions left. You want to ready a strike? Yep. Okay. I'll ready a strike for you. This thing does not seem particularly fast, so there's no rush. It's it's moving pretty slowly. It's bulky, but it's not like very swift. And uh, you're delaying. Calbum. Uh. All right. <laughs> do you now have a secure rope you can use? Yeah. Do, uh, what, what should I use for getting across that rope? Like well, if I need to like cat crawl. It's secured on both ends. Uh, so I will let you use acrobatics if you want to balance your way across. I'll use athletics if you want to like haul your way across, like kind of hanging upside down with your feet kind any, of thing. Any other options? Would you like to use intimidation to well, bully the GM? Me, make me a suggestion and an argument. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use my lore astrology. I'm going to know about the stars. Yeah. Just, the no. stars said I climbed this rope today. Uh, all right. There you go. And 11 acrobatics. And 11 acrobatics. Uh, yeah, if it, it's going to take you all three actions at moving very slowly and deliberately, but you can make it across in one turn. And meanwhile, Spork is just like balance and beaming across. Oh, Spork is already like, over there. Yeah. Like Spork just looked and then just went whoop and just made this parabolic leap and is perched on the rocks on the other Spork, side. Spork, for those unfamiliar, is my cat familiar, actually. Uh, really, the gnome is the cat's familiar, but the gnome doesn't very know that. Exactly, yes. That's well, that's, true. that's all cat status. Yeah, yes, yeah exactly. Yeah. Alrighty, and so you are able to uh, move up right behind Drevin, kind of precariously balanced. There is not a lot of room left. Oh, over I want to. Oh yeah, no, I want to stay here. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's not. He can't move yet because I right. still gotta get over. Uh, I'll move up a little bit. So give him yeah, a little bit I, of room. Yeah, can I? I mean, I'm small. I'm I'm a, I'm just a little little guy. So I want to. Uh, if I could just hold on to his waist, uh, motorcycle style, and just get behind, um, get behind Mocker. If I can. Uh, sure, you can slide to get behind Mocker. That, that way I'm off the rope so that someone can follow me. Okay, sounds like a plan. Um, whoop, here we go. Uh, back to uh, the the Mitflits. They kind of see you all kind of pooling in the doorway, not really uh, getting ready to, not truly really charging in. They do, however, see that Drevin is the one that's holding the rope. So they're going to kind of cry, that one, that one, and they're going to rush up. And with its kind of, it had like a taming fork that it was using to move this thing. It's gonna jab this little fork. Taming up. fork. It's a taming fork. You know those big like two pronged meat forks? Yeah, it's like that. Smaller than that. It's actually perfect for training for for training giant larvae because they're bulky and fleshy, so you can't really like cause real damage. But because they're fleshy, it hurts. So you can be like go in that direction. And Mitflits are not the nicest people in the world, so they don't really yeah. care about that sort Gremlins of thing. Gremlins aren't the nicest people in the um, world. But uh, the fully armored Drevin is no fleshy maggot. Uh, so this is going to be a, uh, a, a, a an 11. Wow, you're very close. Yeah. Tink. The fork bends. <laughs> 
Um, I think it's safe to say I'm quite literally ignoring them up to this point. That's fair. The second Stop. Mitflit will charge after you as well, uh, line up right next to Mocker, but again, jabbing his, could take him two move actions to close the distance, um, and jab his fork. And that's a little bit better. That's a 19. No. Uh, Tink. Hmm? On me? No, no on, me. on, on oh, uh, okay. Drevin. They're, they see that Drevin's the one that's letting right. them in, so they're letting I'm more the people show up. Uh, and uh, oh. then we've got the maggot, which is going to go eh, 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 eh. And then it's going to shove its mitflit friend out of the way. Well, it's gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> it's Turn. gonna, it's gonna, gotta kind of be like try to muscle its way past the mitflit, which gets thrown a little bit off balance. That mitflit is gonna be flat-footed for next turn, as uh, the it's they've they they're in their excitement and or desperation, they've kind of managed to get in the way of their friend. So the 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 thing isn't really there. Turns out it's not moving fast enough to really have any force behind it. Yeah, it's well, it's exactly that's kind of what it is. It's like kind of bumping its mitflit trainer <laughs> trying to get past. Uh, and then the last Mitflit is going to scamper up a bit more to here, and it's going to pull a dart. Uh, Drevin, yeah, they they're, they're haven't given up on trying to knock Drevin down. Uh, that's going to be a 22. That, they finally, one point, wow, they got it. One point of damage. It caught your snout for a point of damage. That's what they're good at. They got my ears, and then they got my snout. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. That's it. Poor puppy. You, got, you look like a porky. You look I, like a dog that's got into the porcupine. to jump in, by the way. I had ready to strike. You have a reaction. You can use it whenever you want. Uh, I'm going to um, jump in, and Najee, that's, who's been waiting very patiently, going, can I hit it now? 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 I'll go, finally, yes. And... Uh, Mocker will come down and he'll try to cut into this thing's side as he's stabbing at Drevin. You know you're holding the sword backwards, right? You know, I need you to not tell me how to hold my friend. Uh, awesome. My friend. Careful of the thing behind you. You got very close to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, try not to take down the scenery. Watch me. <laughs> also, didn't you just put salt on that? Yeah. He did, yeah. which okay. makes it great on against the maggot, but no no bonus against the uh, the mitflits at that are the only ones in range at the moment. It's assault and a deadly weapon. <laughs> yeah, yes. I don't think that has a deadly trait. Yet. All right, give me that roll on that mitflit. Are you targeting the one that's directly in front of you? Yes. Okay, go for it. Uh, however, uh, he was actually aiming for the maggot, and it kind of went awry. Uh, that's a two on the die. Oh yeah, there you go. Uh, that's basically Naji thought you were. We were. It's like I thought we were going for the maggot. D D <laughs> it's stop. too far away. D kind of starts twisting in your hand a little. Stop. Unagreeably. Uh. Would Drevin like to jump in? I still have to hold the rope. That's true. He'll That's probably true. be jumping in. What's Corwin doing? Uh, getting across to the other side of the bridge. Uh, rope secured on our end. Just going to climb his way across. Uh, hey, athletics or acrobatics? It's going to be acrobatics. Like? And he's going to try once we get over there to, like, if I would have the actions to tumble through to the other side of the mitflit in front of Altmach. Let's see how good your, your balance check is to get across that rope. Uh, not that great. That's only a uh, nine, but... Grand total of a nine? Yeah, well, I uh, only have a plus five accurate. Like, so, no, that should um, be a ten, because I, I don't know why that's two and four is six, not five, so that should be a ten. That should be a ten. Okay, all right. So, um, I'll, I'll trust you, you're counting correctly. You use your fingers if you need to. Well, but, uh, two and four and four is ten. Okay, cool. So, uh, you're... you're this, Drevin isn't really bracing. He's just kind of holding. He's just standing there and relying on kind of his stance and his weight to hold the end of the rope. So this turns uh, into a slack line very quickly. You are much heavier than Calvin. Fair. And so Drevin actually gets pulled a little off balance as he's trying to hold on to it, making your progress very slow. You can't get across, but you can take all three actions. That's fine. I'll just get to the other side and, hey, I'm at least in range that if someone gets hurt next turn, I can uh, give them some help. You, you know go. whose turn it is. It's yours. All right. If you don't want to, I mean. No, I don't this, yeah. okay. I'm gonna grab the mifflet and then put it in the moat <laughs> <laughs> because I have yes. one hand on my weapon, one hand on the rope. So let go of the rope. Yeah. Grab the mifflet, deposit mifflet in water. <laughs> Toss it. Shove. Shove. Man, yeah, it's. But you gotta get it 15 feet. 
there's no mechanical way to do it, but this is funny. Exactly. Yeah. So I want to kind of try to. And it doesn't hurt it. either because it's going into water. Here's the issue: is you have Corin directly behind you. Well, let me grab it and throw it over his head. I'm not short. I'm nearly seven foot tall. I'm a great null. You can I throw it over my head. I'm like six foot. Just let him make an athletics check and see how yeah, well he does. Let me grab it, and if I can grab it, All right, let athletics me try and to throw grab. It. We'll start with that. Yeah. You and your shenanigans. Uh, I'll re-roll that four because this is funny. <laughs> as well, you should. Uh, rage and fury is going away. Burning your. It's now signifying burning nothing. hero From points on shenanigans. Things. This is dirt. That's Peter. what I do. He'll get rewarded for it too. You Natural know. twenty. He'll get yeah. rewarded for it too. <laughs> Rule of cool. Yeah. Uh, so I'll so it's you, now restrained. I will. Uh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, but uh, all right. I'll, uh, <laughs> yeah. No. You, you you pick this thing up by the head and you hold it out at arm's length and it's just got even with the fork in its hand it can't reach you. So it's just swinging like this. You're you're bullying this this. I mean, uh, admittedly, evil, nasty little creature. But, give me your uh, lunch money, you know, kid. Fair enough. All right, give me another athletic check to throw Shaking. him. <laughs> yeah. Come on, another Totally 20. against the rules, by the way. Uh, that's going to be a 20 total. 20 total? You know what? Why not? You take this thing and you just, you don't look, you just fling it over your shoulder. <laughs> you just pick it up and just bloop and yes. fling it right behind you. And you're bloop, <laughs> splash. And and then, this is why I almost fell off the rope is because ah. there was a full gremlin flying towards me. Right, right. <laughs> and then I'm just going to grip my weapon. Okay. <laughs> the the other mitt flits um, in front of kind of like take like a little stutter step back. Uh, I told you to leave. Are these things the same size as me or bigger than me? Their head is bigger than you. The rest of their body, not really. Comparable. So comparable. height. I mean, I'm like, I'm two eight. Yeah, you're two eight. These things would be slightly taller than you, but they are they're, like, they're probably weigh twice as much as you like, just from their head. Yeah, mass. they're like they're like a toddler. They're way over over. Yeah, if it weren't for that large jaw of toothiness, yeah, they'd be like a they'd be yeah. like that. We're fighting hair, Arnold. Are these recognizable? Oh god, I can't get that out of my head now. Yeah, are that's these it. recognizable at all? Like do I recognize the one that ran away a few minutes ago? The midflit? Yeah. Oh, like I, I can you tell them apart, do you mean? Yeah. Um Because I know I told one of them to stop. And, and then it ran off. I'll give you a... You can spend an action to do a society check if you want. I don't care that much. Okay. I'm just curious if, like, by a glance, I know which one I already told to leave. Um, What's your society? Five. Not bad. Um, yeah, it's hard to tell. Fair they're enough. kind of all wearing scraps. They Actually, um, these ones have uh, taming forks that they're using on the... The other one didn't. The other ones did. They had, like, little short swords, so probably different. Um, so Mocker remembers, um, that these things, um, don't particularly, uh, like, uh, sparks and loud noise and things like that. So he's going to take the rock that he was using and spark it off of his sword, um, and create like this little blast of light to try to kind of throw this thing off guard a little bit. Okay, uh, so uh, are you trying to change the target of your exploit vulnerability yeah. right now? Okay, go ahead and give me another... Uh, I just blanked your skill out. Esoteric lore check. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a 10. Uh, a 10, um, you, you are success... You don't really... It's a failure, but good enough to kind of spark some strikes off that you knock that rock salt off your blade, by the way, in doing so. But uh, yeah, you, the, the mitfla kind of recoils a little bit from this uh, sparking strike. Okay. Um, and then uh, he'll go in and he'll attempt to slice down this thing's middle. All right. Roll to hit. Uh, it's a seven on the die, so that'll be a total of 15. Uh, the mitflits are not at all armored. They're wearing scrap cloth, so your blade easily cuts through this, uh, causing a probably grievous wound. And they are tiny. The sword uh, is for the twice so their size. So that's going to be a 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. What? Thaumaturges, baby. Holy crap. Yeah. Weapon uh, thaumaturge <laughs> hurts. You yeah. if you're draw a... Naji sings as this sword Friendly just blood! moves through it, all, bisecting tissue and bone from this gremlin and laying it out. Uh, this this, this midflit is dead, dead, down for the count in a pool of its own blood. Oh, that ought to make the sword happy. 
And uh, normally I would move, um, but I do not want to leave the gnome unprotected, so I'm going to stay right where I am. It's okay, I buddy. You can, it, it's okay, man. You can you can move forward one one step at least. <laughs> I'll move forward a tiny bit, this. but I'm definitely. No, no. I remember, I'm, I'm uh, motorcycle hugging. Oh, okay. Around the waist. Just getting his feet dragging. I'm gonna yeah. I'm, I'm gonna take a five foot step forward just okay. to get him off the ledge a little, but okay. I'm not gonna leave him unprotected. Okay, you'll take a five foot step forward to kind of secure your footing a bit, uh, stepping in within range of the of the gooey maggot. So that was an exploit vulnerability. Yep, that's all three of your actions. What is Calum going to do? Calum is going to uh, pull out a little, um, what looks like a, what, I mean, if is it, what, what's the air quality in this room? It's very similar to the air quality outside because the ceiling has been collapsed for a so long time. So there's like time. a little bit of like particles in the air. The like air uh, certainly lots moist. of it are getting kicked up by the fight right now. Great. So uh, what you see is a blue laser pointer that uh, points to the maggot thing. Uh, that's going to be a ray of frost, actually. Um, Spork man. up in the rafters. Yeah. Their eyes get really big. Yep, yep. My man's been to Alkenstar. Uh, he got that projector. Damn, he's probably going to... Actually, you know what? I'm going to re-roll that. I'm going to use one of the hero points I got last week, which I don't remember who gave this one to me, so I'm going to burn that one to re-roll this dice. I guess Saiyan Fox or Scott in South Dakota. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, well, I know one is from Scott and one is from Saiyan Fox. Yeah. I don't know who the third one is, and that was the one I got early in the in the, uh, in the the session last week. Was that the one you carried Jeez, over from... That was uh, worse. No. no. He didn't carry any over. Okay. Uh, the Ray of Frost, the, the laser pointer is... I'm just distracted by Spork, and it just flies on there. It's just writing well, stuff on the, it, on the it, wall. It's just a big old fleshy mass. It's pretty easy to hit. Why don't you tell me what the number is? Uh, I rolled a critical one. Oh, in that case, so, yes. No, yeah, that's I, an I, absolute I miss. miss. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the chance for a Bane card that's never had, uh, that we don't have. Yeah, I don't have a Bane card. Oh. Without those Bane cards, you'll start seeing them get used. Yeah. That's true. That's so, true. So he is I, an evil uh, So you got one action left. People. Uh, uh, shield. Shield. Wise. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, the maggot, certainly not one to turn down a meal that's walked right into range, is going to w l lunge at you with its mandibles as it tries to he, go latch for, onto For Mocker. those just listening, he just made like a predator motion with his hands around his mouth. That's terrifying. I hate it. Nick. 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 No, stop. I don't like it. <laughs> it's awful. You got to add the sound effect. To <laughs> work, 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 work. Um, let's see. First, uh, the first bite is going to come down with a... A ten. <laughs> oh, that's scary. It's terrifying. It it it's it is blind. <laughs> it's not the smartest. Uh, second attack is gonna come in with uh, a little bit better. That's a fifteen. Uh no. Uh, mocker uh, knocks it aside. And uh, third attack is gonna be a natural one. <laughs> you better run from my blind attack dog. Kind of <laughs> flailing around <laughs> trying to get you. No, 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 no. Stop making that noise. <laughs> uh, the last remaining mitflit is going to take a half a step back, and then it's going to, it has at its back a door. It's going to open that door, and it's going to run through it, uh, screaming, uh, intruders, intruders, boss, boss, and uh, the door will close behind it. What's a boss? Well, These mitflits apparently are from Brooklyn. I'm assuming their leader is some top cuz, but we got a bitey thing that ain't doing too good on you still. Oh. And what's Corn going to do about that bitey thing? Uh, well, I don't want to take Drevin's space here, so just kind of going to... Oh, excuse me, set Callum. Just step yep, he's over him. Against the wall. He's like up against that wall. And it's going to shoot around up to the other side of the maggot. Okay, you're going to... Are you going to try to tumble through or are you going to take the long way around? I'm just going to run around it. Okay, so uh, it, it... I mean, it being blind, it doesn't really seem to be able to react to you quick enough. And you managed to flank it. And uh, assuming I would have had to have both hands to climb over... Uh, yeah, well, you were balancing, so no. No, yeah, true. Uh, so, laid in hand, just gonna go to stab this thing go, and go for it. Ooh, do I wanna? I'm gonna devise, because I can get there, devise, and attack. So, let's see what my attack's looking like here. Oh, that was almost a 16. That's the second time that's happened to you where you got on something good and they went, yeah, just. <laughs> just. Uh, well, four. I don't think a 13 is going to hit this thing. Well, no, it's, it's, it, I don't know. You're We're feeling lucky. It's a big here. fleshy dumb thing. You might. I don't know. 13 is real low. It is. It is. I'm not going to deny that. Uh, instead. He looks at it and it's just, it's just, ew, it just looks so It's got gross. too many. Uh, 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 where do you even hit this thing? It's just all the same thing. You should hit I it mean, in the anywhere. appendages. <laughs> it's, uh, hit as many. It doesn't have legs. It just kind of 
inches. That's why I said appendages. Right. I'm instead... Uh, Three. No, I can't do that. Yeah, I'll take the swing on a 13. Take the swing on a 13? Uh, you stab it. It's inexpert, but... It's a big old lump of flesh with absolutely no armor on it whatsoever, and it doesn't seem terribly spry, so you manage to draw a solid hit. Yeah. I only usually think about oozes having an AC that low. This is an ooze, but maggot. It's a flesh ooze. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a moose. It's oozy. Uh, so that's going to be uh, six damage plus an additional... Yeah, just six. Just six? Okay. Yeah, two and a four on the die. I don't have any strength for damage mods. Okay. Oh, plus it was a device. I was gonna uh, say plus four, it? so ten. There we go. That's 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 decent. Um, you hit this thing, and it recoils from this injury. This isn't the pricks of the forks that it's used to in training. This is a solid wound, and it reels up, and then it just spews into the air uh, as it re reflexively regurgitates its last meal after taking this trauma, and disgusting smelling bile just spreads around it in what? this five foot emanation. Oh. I'm going to need a fortitude save from Corwin and Mocker. Why are you like this? Because gross. Oh, now that's a good one. There we go. Great. Five on the die. It's going to be a 13. 13 is a fail. What about Corwin? 24. 19 on the die. 24, 19 on the die. Uh, that's gun. Oh, well, hang on a second. Uh, and you got a 19. Okay, very good. Uh, so you, you're you going to pass. So, uh, Mocker, you're going to be sickened one. Oh, uh, yes, he is. That's appropriate. This kind of twists your stomach. Jen is sickened one. Yeah, exactly. It, uh, and uh, what's Drevin going to do? Going to hold my breath, step forward, and just squish the bug. Why do they even keep this disgusting thing? Roll the squish bug. Uh, that's going to be a 24. Uh, you hit the bug. That's squish. a critical hit, in fact. We just heard the squish sound. Yeah, there you cool. go. And... Just double damage. No rolling extra dice. I like the doubles. And that's going to be... 14 damage. 14 damage. Uh, what happens to it? I squish the bug. <laughs> you squish the, the bug. The flat of the hammer just... Uh, Stop vomiting. And uh, certainly, Mocker's day gets no better. <laughs> Mocker retches all over your shoe. Is there? A, is it a cloud of, like, buggy vomit mist, or is it just... Oh, no, no. It is vomit. quite liquid. Okay, okay. I was, like, worried about me Ugh. walking through the cloud. You know, I'm real oh. glad that I, I always wear the gators out here to the swamp because getting vomit issues is real nasty. Mocker will take out his notebook and he'll start looking at this thing and making notes on it. Don't ever go near <laughs> these. Before they I smell. have to breathe again, I'm going to walk Bum. towards the door where I saw the uh, the little buddy leave. Okay. Uh you can, uh, make, your guys are all out of initiative. So yeah, I'm, I'm not going to open it yet. I'm just walking towards it. Okay. So uh, I'm not near the, the maggot body. Well, let's talk exploration actions. <sighs> Mocker will take out some gelatin, some <laughs> mentholatum, and he'll yeah. actually put it under his nose. <sighs> well, uh, that one ran off that way, and that that's the second one that's going Shh. out. Corbin, I'm thinking, and I'm going to start recalling knowledge. Okay. <laughs> You're I'm talking and I'm thinking. seeking, scouting, detecting magic. Detecting magic. All right. So this Where'd, room. Hold on. Where'd Neil go? Ah, an excellent question. And uh, your. Um, oh, there was nobody. This is definitely going to be a that's odd trigger on yours because uh, you were quite distracted by you know getting across a bridge. Charge into the bridge. Yeah, Neil, it isn't here. Um, your. Your that's odd kind of picks up, and you get a sudden pain in your eye, um, almost oh. like it's stabbing into you. And you will notice uh, with your that's odd, a, the figure of Nell kind of rising into the air. She almost looks limp. Um, and what seems to be surrounding her is a, a very wispy, almost impossible to see violet sparks of light. 
but you see Nil rise up out of the gatehouse and be carried over the over the keep, out of your line of sight, to vanish somewhere in the depths of the dungeon. I've seen uh, something like this before. And that ain't good. Mocker, you see this, but where your hole in your vision is, you can almost make out this veiny, clawed hand that seems to have grabbed Nil and is carrying her away. That seems to be entirely spectral, but certainly seems to carry Nil just as much. And this stabbing pain is just blazing in your in your brain. If Nil were awake, she would be in alt with joy at the fact that she was being grabbed by this strange, yeah. horrific hand. None of the rest of you see any strange, horrific hand, by the way. Uh, he just I just see weird, per- hey, Draven. I'm just gonna point him up there and clue him in on this. Is to, it uh, it's like wisp stuff up? That's something you know about? Magical. Uh, <sighs> um, it's it's quite magical. <laughs> in fact, uh, you'll get off a, a you'll get off a um, you'll you'll get off a ma- it, it just comes back. Yes, this is magic kind of thing. That's that's what you get at level one. Detect magic. Get a plus one. So clue in as I make a knowledge check with a plus one. You what? It's the check that would be relevant to that. You get a plus one. Uh, it's it's got to be related to your your lead, right? Well, I mean, the yeah, lead the, right the now is in. what's going on at Gauntlet, and it looks like a weird wispy thing. So, assuming okay. that it would connect, that, 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 I'll let it go. That's that sounds reasonable. Do you want to wisp lore it? Sure. Okay. It's a plus six. So you're looking at this thing. Wisps don't pick people up and carry them away. You have heard of some creatures that are wisp-like that might be able to do something like that. But typically what a wisp will do is a wisp will just feed off of emotions, usually negative emotions. That's what wisps tend to do. Wisps don't pick people up. It looks like wisps are here. There certainly looks wisp-ish in nature. Like there's something connect. There's some connection here you can't see. This doesn't feel entirely unrelated, but there is something here that you're not seeing that that is very unsettling that it could just bodily pick someone up and carry them away. Now, see, I told you there was something they ain't telling us. And here it is. Is it related to spirits, by the way? It, uh, sure, we'll say so. You want to roll me a lower spirits plus 10? So, places can have spirits associated with them. Uh, this is a philosophy which tends to be a bit more animist. You don't typically see that as a common philosophy that takes place here. However, nonetheless, spirits exist, and they suffuse the world. And locations can have spirits. Uh, From a simple town to even individual buildings, to spirits of the forest, to spirits of particular clearings, and spirits of ruins. Of course, they will be your spirit of a ruin here. This spirit of Gauntlet, to be able to bodily pick someone up and carry them away, you can't see a hand. Mocker can apparently see something. This spirit would be phenomenally powerful and terrifying in its abilities. You do know that spirits tend to only operate within the scope of their, I guess you'd call it purview. So in this case, Gauntlet Keep would be this spirit's purview. Yeah, you can think of it as a territory, (laughs) although it it kind of, it it, it extends to things relating to that particular territory, not, but territory is a great way to think about it. That's a great starting place for it. And that, this spirit here in relation to this, if it is the spirit of Gauntlet, it knows that you are outsiders and this could be a problem. Now, boys, I ain't saying we should go after it. Well, I'm not saying we should not go after uh, Neil here, but I'm, I am going to caution us and say uh, that thing is mighty powerful and, uh, and it, it's, it, it ain't in no books. I ain't telling you, about, but I do, have a, I do have a pamphlet here. So it is in a book. <laughs> If I'm, well, it's in a pamphlet. It's if, different in a book. It's these these are spe- these, these they're this like what, short books. This ain't this is this stuff they ain't gonna give you on the on the. Uh, it's in a the chick library. track. Look, it's a chick track. <laughs> it is. If, if I know anything about Nil, this could very well be the best day of her entire life. Look, I think we got a little situation here. First off, 
they warned our boss. Second, Nil's getting kidnapped. Uh, Nil is out of sight. Yeah, I don't know. I, I saw it go over that way, but then it went down. So it's over one of these walls here. We'll find her. Upside, um, if you're saying this is a real powerful spirit, I mean, Bakor is long dead, but maybe she's still got something here. Uh, at least Nil said he, she was a fan. That's what I so, mean. This is the best day of her life. Maybe she ain't gonna, you know, get ripped apart by spirits instantly and we got some time to find her. Look, when I came in this room, I felt a resonance. Now that I have a moment to focus on it, can I get any more of a specific feeling from this room? You absolutely can, especially once the pain behind your eye fades away uh, as Nil vanishes and you start to focus on the auras that you can feel in the room. God, that's such a good bell. It's It's so so loud loud and it's so tiny. Yeah, I know, but it's like this perfect little chime. You uh, focus on the on the psychometric resonances that that lurk in this room, and you can almost feel and as though it were playing out before you the immense energies that were unleashed here and the desperation and hatred that were behind them. There was a battle here. That there was, there a, was fire a fire fight. fight. <laughs> oh uh, there was. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Yeah. <laughs> There was a a battle that took place here, and it doesn't take you long thinking about the history of this place to think what battle that might be. Almost assuredly, as the Rose Guard broke their way into Gauntlet Keep, they were met by Belcora initially in this room where very powerful magics were unleashed to try to drive the heroes away. You all will actually see Mocker's face get overridden by what a ghostly figure for just a half a second, and the sword will almost get bigger in your eyes, and a very small tableau will play out faster than the mind's eye before it's completely wiped away from in front of you, and Mocker will snap back to himself. This this is where Bellacora was defeated. Well, yeah, it's her lair, ain't it? It's supposed to be, at least. Oh, how invigorating. I thought it was like the lighthouse proper, but... You don't sense the defeat here. The battle started in this room. It started here. Oh, uh, look. This is so interesting. We just started our own here, because we got focus. All right, sorry. With, let's go in that room. Corwin, oh. actually, uh, you are not being distracted by the ghosts of the past. Uh, you are able to kind of focus more on the here and now. And you do notice a few things that kind of jump out at you. Remind me again, I really should write down who knows under common. Are you one of them? Yes. All right, excellent. So you look around, and the Mitflits that have taken over this area of Gauntlet Keep have been very forthcoming with decorating their new abode to the way that pleases them, which in the case of Mitflits means putting graffiti over things that they can reach. So most everything is going to be at a fairly low level. And you'll notice a few notations that seem to be more w- more than just Flig was here. Uh, you will see one over one door leading out of this room labeled Nursery. And uh, sort of a drawing of what looks to be a, a blob. Similar looking to the big maggoty looking thing right there. There is another uh, door that has a basically a big X kind of scrawled onto it, which you would imagine would probably mean just don't go in here. I'm used to these kind of ones with all the, you know, oh, there's dangerous animal in the area. Don't go here. There's big old teeth and you just scrawl it on a tree. That way if Lumberjack comes by, they know to That's probably what the Mitflits meant by this. Um, If you look around to your right, the door where that one Mitflit ran away through screaming for boss, there are carvings over there that seem to basically just be more of like, you know, this is our territory now, kind of the, the, and you will actually see Mud Licker's rule kind of scrawled on that door. Well, uh, headed off that way. I won't see so big old X. Don't go in there. I mean, it's pretty universal symbol, but danger, whatever's in there, we don't want to deal with right now. If, if they put it on the door, it probably ain't going to come out after us. It means it's going to stay in there. That's what you figure, yeah. Uh, the, the room, though, does extend further down and around a corner as well. Probably ran off down, just kind of looking. 
So, I mean, if we want to check out the room here that he ran into, that's probably our first best bet, but... That's what I'd prefer to do. I'm going to guess the boss is further in. Drive but that's going to make sure ain't no one coming out behind us. I'll stay behind I'll stay behind you, but to your left. You stay behind me. Behind you? But then, but then I'm on the back. That's how I like it, so that you're not, like, you know, up where you can get poked at. Because you're good with, like, talking to folks, right? I have been known to make conversation on occasion. <laughs> Look, I think <laughs> we ain't got enough info here to really, you know, deal with folk. And I know the sword talks a lot to you, but maybe ignore him for this one. We got to figure out what's, like, where this boss is or what's going on. They might have something to tell us about those weird wispy things that blocked us in. Now, Corrin, I ain't the smartest of mans, but I think the boss is probably where he was screaming, Hey, boss! Hey, well, boss! I don't think he's in hey, there. Boss. He said, go get the boss. No, no. He said, hey, boss, the peoples is here. Hey, boss, intruders. That's what he said. I heard then why don't no. we introduce ourselves? Look, that would be I want to figure out what's going on here. So I'm thinking we go in, you know, oh, hey, mud liquors rule, y'all. And just point out the sign on the the bottom of the door here. Just, if we go in acting like a real friendly sort, we might be able to figure out something of what's going on. Wait, is it mud liquor uh, like apostrophe S or mud liquors as like a team name? I like a team name. Yeah. If I'm going to Not that there's really name. much in the way of punctuation in the undercommon used but, by Mitflits, but yes. If we're going to introduce ourselves, we should be well smelling. Some cologne would be most agreeable. I Does not really help in, much in the swamp. In most you know. cases here, I'd agree with you. I think in this case, and just pick up some mud, they're going to prefer this. <sighs> yes. In we go. Just kind of. I'm just going to walk mud. up to the door with these inane compatriots. <laughs> Look, Drevin, I know you want to just go smashing them, but Nil just no. got kidnapped. We got to figure out what's going on here. I don't want to go smashing them, but I can't help Nil until we deal with them. Exactly. So if they can help us figure out what's helping them with Nil, then we can smash them faster. Or we could chase them off and go find Nil. Eh, either way. If it comes to that, it comes to that. But I mean, In so far they ain't been too friendly. Is there a dinner party behind that door? Because if there is, I should warn you, we're coming in. We brought Maggot in Undercommon. <laughs> my, my friend's is real fancy. He, sm he smells nice. You should let us let us in, I guess. I'm going to open the door. You're going to open the door. Uh, you kind of, uh, you, you'll open the door, and we're going to be the... into this room here where you, you push this door open, kind of staggering over this this mound of earth and debris to kind of push this door open and make your way in. What lays before you is a decently sizable room. The most um, the most prominent um, feature of the room would be that the center of the floor is almost entirely collapsed downward. Uh, your psychometric senses pick a massive explosion happened in this room that caved the floor in, causing it to collapse into the lower levels. Uh, you don't really get to you, you, you sense uh, the battle continued into this room with Belcora causing this magical explosion to attempt to stop the heroes from advancing. And you sense that someone important fell here. And not fell as in died, but fell through the floor. And But the battle still continued uh, even after that this happened. Um, however, the current residences of this room you'll see four mitflits that are lurking about the pit, looking at the at the adventurers. They've come! They've come! Hey, now, hold on, folk. Um, hold on. A They're... hero fell. Just hand on Aldemar's shoulder. <laughs> Focus here, cuz. Oh, you kind of snap back to the present uh, where you see, well, definitely not where, not not nearly as, as epic or exciting, but... Oh. Uh, it's still definitely much more of a present danger. Uh, four of these mitlets kind of lurking about the peripheries of the room, uh, glaring uh, host with hostility, but they're not, they're willing to say, they're not moving just yet. What do you want? Why do you come here? Well, we came here because a friend of ours said there were some weird lights, and I don't know if y'all noticed, but uh, the whole place is kind of surrounded by weird lights right now. Them, Spooky uh, hunt! Yeah, them things. Yeah! You uh, you all stuck here too, or are they invading your territory? Oh, we grow strong. We're mud lickers. We'll show you all. That's fair enough, but uh, well, get gone. Can you deal with the lights? We're willing to help you with them. <laughs> that, that the the lights? 
The ones outside, keeping this place all stuck in. Ah! And kind of like, they kind of look at each other and they kind of all gather together and kind of puddle up. And one of them kind of peeks up and looks at all of you, making sure you're on that side of the room still. I'm not moving out of the door kind of frame. Go, okay. Okay. Can, can do this? Yeah. If any of you want to listen in, um, who speaks under common, you can give me a perception check. Cool. Definitely. <laughs> I'm outside the room. I didn't hear anything. Okay. <laughs> That's a 26. A 26. 18. 18, okay. Um, Mock is going to be a little distracted to hear all of this, but uh, Corwin, your ears kind of keep peeking on it. It's like, the, the, the spooky lights? You mean the haunts? Yeah, the spooky lights. They say they want help with the spooky lights. We don't, we don't know what to do about the spooky lights. That's why we want to go to cook. That's why we want to get out of here and go to town. They, they want to help with the spooky lights. They said they're really dangerous. I don't know. Maybe we can make them go to the spooky lights. Oh, you think we could do that? Yeah, yeah, we could trick them. If we could trick them to go do the lights, yeah, that would be two for one. Oh, the boss will be pleased. And then there's no more witnesses. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what the boss is always saying. No witnesses. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, back me up, back me up. Okay, okay. So one of the mitflits, they'll kind of break their huddle, <laughs> and then they'll go back and they'll look and they'll say, Um, 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 the, the spooky lights, you can get by if you know the password and, and uh, you have the key. And well, it'll pat its pockets for a bit, and it's gonna pull out a rock. It's it's there's like a it's a different colored rock than the types of rocks you find around here, but it is a rock. It's like this is the key. You you give it to the you give it to the the you show it to the spirits, and you say, "Get out of here, spirits!" And you say it just like that while you're holding the rock, and the, the, they'll let you go. And uh, you, you can have this one. And he'll he'll kind of pitch it across, and it goes right to you. This Mifflets can throw, man. This he, he baseball throws this thing, this rock to you, um, and kind of bounces off on your chest, off your chest, and you oh, you catch it pretty decently. Um, huh. And he kind of throws this rock, and it's like, uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's that's what you're gonna do. And the Mifflets are all kind of like, hmm, hmm. they all like nod their heads very vigorously uh, as they as they uh, they tell this. You walk right on up to them and then you show them that rock and that that, that that'll work. That's that's how we do it. Yeah, yeah. And they all look at each other and they all like nod. That's how vigorously. you get on out of the swamp here. That's right. That's right. And they nod, 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 nod. We yeah. all looked outside recently, right? Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, absolutely. That's how that works. You know the ones I'm talking about. Of course. Yeah, Not the no. ones through the door. All of them. That nod, 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 nod. You sure? Uh huh. Yep. Oh yeah. All right. Great. Uh, they're like uh, they're. You automatically succeed. Uh, the rest of you, what are perception DCs around the room? Well, actually, the rest of you make perception checks for sense motive if you want to. Uh, I don't speak. Oh, that's true. No, yeah. They, I'm you... just listening. Okay, fair enough. One of them throws a rock at Corwin who catches it, and he looks at it with, like, the biggest, like, go and pull the other one expression on his face. Uh, it's going to be a 24, 18 on the die. Okay. Yeah, he... Cor Calvin still didn't hear anything. Okay. He heard it. He's... Uh, he he, be he believes it a hundred percent because you know it, the, anything's possible. The, the Mitflits are lying through their teeth. They have no idea what's going on outside. They are just trying to trick you guys into a going away and hopefully getting killed by spirits by giving you a worthless rock. So, I appreciate the rock and all, fellas. But if you hear me out here, I think your boss will have more luck with us dealing with you know whatever else you got problems with. I mean, the doors and all we can deal with, spirits outside we can deal with. Uh, but my cousin here, just slap a hand on Altamok's shoulder, he's real good with the more spooky stuff. And I think your boss probably knows a bit of what needs to be dealing with around here, even more than you folks do, because if you're asking me, he's sending you all out here to deal with the spooky lights. Hmm. I think he knows how to deal with them. He just wants to see if you do, but... It's going to be real impressive for him if you get Altamok here to fix it. Why don't you give me a diplomacy check? Uh, can I get Al you using Altamox? Because uh... The soul of Bellacora haunts this place. Should you wish, we can appease the spirit and show your superiors how intelligent and refined you are. Okay. Uh, you're gonna go, going off Corwin's lead here. You'll go ahead and try to step in. Uh, go ahead and you give me a diplomacy check then. He's more good with the eloquent words than I am. Puts it into better terms. 
definitely the mitt flits. Appreciate loquaciousness. A good diplomacy. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy the words. The mitt flits are safe because no one has told me they're lying yet. Uh, it's a, tw- a 15 on the die, so a 22 total. 22 total. Um, hmm. We can go telling oh. you how to deal with them. Hmm. And they kind of look at each other a bit, and they all huddle up again, and they kind of start talking a bit about it. Okay. Can't we just stab him? Yeah. Your sword is like vibrating in your hand, like with a barely controlled bloodlust. Um, okay. We'll we'll take you to the boss, but but you don't you try any funny stuff. We'll be ready. And they all kind of have their little short sword stabber things out. Oh come on, there ain't no need for that. We're friends here. We're, we brought you a big boss. old monster to eat. <sighs> Fair enough. That was our pet. No, the big old frog out in the water. He ain't going to be dugging you anymore. You killed it? No. Well, no. we found it dead. No. Nah. It, dead, dead when we got here. Again, it's a good thing this is in a different language. <laughs> Lying I mean, it, is bad. I mean, it was trying to eat your folks, so we kind of... That was our favorite game was John Dodge the Squirt. The Slurk? The Squirt. I don't know what a squirt is. It squirts. Oh. You gotta dodge it. That's the game. Take us to the boss. You killed it? It's dead? No, we found it dead. Something else in the swamp killed it. Mm. Boss. Nothing died mysteriously Focus. before you got here. Boss. I mean, Focus. there wasn't a big old swarm of wisps outside before we got here neither. Uh, give me deception check. Poor There's about to be a lot more mysterious <laughs> Yeah. Because, uh, did you mean roll a, a 20? Uh, yes. I mean, I don't know. You're, I the, one zero you're the one lying through your yeah. teeth. Don't blame me That's for an eight. this. An eight. Okay. Um, they have to roll, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> no, huh? it's, it's versus their perception. No, it's oh. versus their perception, DC. Sorry. Um, if only. The, uh, they uh, they, they, have great. they kind of narrow their eyes, and they're like, you know, it's like, <laughs> we'll take one of you to see the boss. You guys seem dangerous. I'll go. Well, if you're sure, I mean... Where, like, just so we know, and we're clear here, like, we agree to this. Uh, where is the boss? Oh, he's right through this room. They oh. point to a door behind them. Easy enough. Now, Mocker, splitting the party is what you call, uh, not a great idea. We're already down a, a member here. So. By the way, uh, the Mitflits, like, just, just what you know about them and the fact that they are very bad liars. Whoever they can get to come alone with them into the next room, they're going to do their best to knife them. Yes, I'm aware. Now, did they point at the double doors? Uh, they pointed at the double doors, yes. Yeah, so we'll come in, stand here with you folk, wait around and uh, till they get back. Okay. This seems like a supremely bad idea. I just want to put it on the table that uh, when, when you get them alone, that's when they that's when they bring you in the that's when they that's when they mess with your mind, man. That's when they start. Yeah, Calvin, calm down. They friendly folk here. Mm, yeah, we're, just kind of give them a give them a nod. So back to common land for two seconds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we Are been we talking. supposed to go through that door? Yes, like, you're going to barge right through with me. Now? In a minute. Okay. Just going to look up. Hey, y'all, just in common. Y'all understand this? Yeah. And I'll kind of huddle up again. All the mitflits are together, by the way. They're all in the clump. Um, they kind of like, like, you know, look at it. Yes! In an attempted common? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, Drevin, we're, they're going to be walking through the door over here. Uh, the second we get in the room, just start, you know. Can't do that. They're lying to us. They have, they are lying, and they fully intend they to They get mocking. one chance. We gave them the chance. Tell them to use the single door and leave now. Uh, my bud here saying he don't trust you back in Undercommon. Uh, I mean, one of y'all can lead... My friend, my cousin here, uh, through the door, but he don't want you in the room. They kind of like noticeably, like kind of, kind of look at each other, and they come. He ain't the trusting sort. I don't know. No, and I'm falling for it. Never this. And they they pull their swords and they they go to attack. Well, you know what that means. Uh, that means that we're going to take a quick little break, actually, and uh, we'll come back to uh, barging through the mitflits. Uh, oh, God, they're going to be doing this again. Oh, no. What have I done? 
I've locked them into shaking their dice for 10 whole minutes. Oh. I'm gonna balance one on my nose. We better go. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back everyone from break. As our heroes, their deception has finally failed against the Mitflits, or they finally grew tired of the Mitflits <laughs> crap. I feel, I'm not like good at lying. gave up on deceiving them at some point. <laughs> I was trying to be that. friendly. <laughs> they would have happily walked one of you into the next room to try to stab uh -huh, you. Uh -huh. I mean, that's how that yeah. would have worked. Um, but uh, first, to save all of your risks, feel free to roll that initiative real quick. <laughs> yeah. And then the next thing we'll do, uh, for our people just joining us, why don't we go around and describe our characters? Uh, we'll start over here this time. Uh, hi, I'm Arcadis and or Devin. Uh, you probably know me by the first name more typically run behind the scenes streams. Uh, I play Corwin of Ashti here, a investigator and Otari lumber surveyor. Howdy, I'm Drevin Sorrel, and I'm a big boy. I'm a big old great knoll, paladin of Saren Ray. I am the opposite. My name is Bobby. I'm playing Calbum, who is a, uh, a gnome wizard. My name is Jen. Um, I'm married to the GM. Uh, I'm Altamak Mocker Thorngard. And Bain. I played a uh, human thaumaturge with a sword that hates everything. Just whatever happens to be within reach of it. Luckily, your dice are not married to the GM, so there's no, there's no. Uh, oh no, no, no! I will stab her dead. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, yeah. there's no. There's <laughs> no like, <laughs> will kill her. Yeah. I've killed her characters like at least twice in the, in the span, span of our marriage. Nice. Alrighty. Uh, well then, we the we get to Mitflit stabbing. Let's go. What what you what I'm you got there? I'm gonna re-roll with the other one from Saiyan Fox. The the initiative, really? Yeah. Okay. Look because of go. the position, I'd like to have a, a high number. Well, that sounds good to me. We'll go ahead and re-roll it. We'll just go around then. Uh, what you got over there? I'm Ooh. gonna go with a 16. 16. Yep. How about Calvin? 13. 13. What's Drevin get? 10. It got slightly worse. <laughs> <laughs> Corwin. Hey, you know that thing I rolled the first time? Uh, no. One. Oh, it was a one. Is it? Did you roll another one? I rolled one. So you had 12, right? Yeah. What was Callum again? 13. 13. Boop. All righty. Hey, look, the initia is the exact same. It, 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 that, it well, is. Yeah, except <laughs> I think I've got to have some minions. It just in went the down way by here. 10. Uh, yeah. Right, so. Yeah. Oh, right, they just need to get. We got one here. Mocker was a. Uh, 16. 16. Okay, cool. We got that. We've got that. We've got. It's a real good thing we're not in town right now because with the rolls I've been getting on these initiative checks, that. I'd be down so much money. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is a normal Mitflit. It's not a special Mitflit or anything like that. We're just out of tokens. All righty. So the, uh, the, the, the bloodlust glowing in their eyes, uh, they charge forward. We've got a Mitflit who runs up to try to stab at... Who is that? That's Drevin, right? Yeah. Drevin's closest. Well done. Well, good position. Well positioned. He's going to run forward, make a couple of attacks here. We have a 22. That'll hit. We have a ooh, uh, 20. That will also hit. Okay. And uh, he has to move, so that's all we'll do there. So we got... That's a six. Okay, so that's going to be... Seven total slashing damage as he runs forward to savage at your at your thighs. Um, the second um, usually when people savage at my thighs, I make them buy me dinner first. <laughs> God dang it! Oh, all right. Uh, second, Have you missed Jen stream? Have you missed her? <laughs> the second midflit uh, will run around trying to catch a flank on Drevin, uh, although not actually flanking you. You're in the doorway still against the wall, uh, but they will swing at you. Uh, first roll is not going to hit. Second roll, however, is going to be another 20. That uh, is exactly what they're looking for. Which will be three points of slashing damage. And this, they rush forward a whirl of violence before Mocker is able to react. Ugh. Oh. I know it hurts you. Uh, and he'll uh, once again take out his uh, rock and he'll start running it. Well, do along you know what sword. hurts them? Maybe you need to make another esoteric lore check. I don't know. They're the same creature, do I? Yeah, you do. That's right. I do. You don't I get know. to. I just want to. I just want to. Because you I forget. Mean, it's not a real weakness. It's one you make up on the spot. That's it's right. that guy's weak to this. <laughs> yeah. 
Also, in fairness, you only rolled a 10 last time, so. Well, so that's okay. This time I rolled a 12. A 12. Hey. All right. Well, uh, guess what? Um, it's uh, it's still a failure. But what about that guy in front of Drevin? He looks like he doesn't like big, loud things because he has big ears. Yeah, we'll go with that. His ears are particularly are slightly larger, so it looks like a concussive sound will kind of probably bother him. Uh, so Ultimok will set his bell ringing. There you go. Uh, and he'll go in and he'll get... Uh, Get around this thing, and he'll slash down at him. Are you, if you you can flank it if you want to, but you will open your back up to be flanked. I have as well. no desire to do that. I just want to move up beside him. Okay, so you will move in front and make a slash down at this mythlet. Oh, that is an eighteen on the die for a total of twenty five. That is uh, that is a, quite a critical hit through the this, the scraps and rags that these things are wearing. We're gonna get you. And that's an eight. That's max damage. So that's going to be 16 points of damage. Uh, so That's just on the die, isn't it? Eight. Yeah, eight on the die, but plus, plus all of, everything, everything else. Plus else is everything 16. else because thaumaturges. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mocker goes and Naji is like saying, ha ha, more fools. Take the head off. And indeed you do. This mitflit head s- separates and rolls down to the Ooh. pit. Ooh, it's like a football. Uh, you've breaks. got one more action left. Uh, I will... Actually, no, it was uh, no, step, swing. step swing. Nope, yep, that's it. All right. Um, hey! And clamor across uh, to advance on Mocker, and this one is actually going to move behind you to try to take a slab, a slab, a slash. Ooh, that's a 19 on the die for a 27. Just going to assume that hits you. Is that your uh, AC there, Mocker? Yep. Sorry. Uh, crank in your neck, or... Sorry, uh, neuralgia. I uh, apologize. I just no, got no, a no, nerve stab fault. in my That's behind my eyes. Uh, psych- what, what was that? Psychometric resonance. Uh, 27. Twenty-seven. Yes, that will absolutely hit. The vibes are bad in this room. <laughs> yeah, there you I go. I was vibing and it wasn't good. Uh, so you're gonna be taking three slashing damage. Second attack is gonna miss. Hey. And Calvum, you can see that uh, the Mitflits have very clearly set up Mocker to be flanked. Uh, but you get to act before this one runs forward. Uh, oh, right. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'll do that. So he um, pulls out a ball of twine and just sort of pulls a like a skein of twine. Not a ball. A skein of twine. Skein. Skein? Skein? What? I don't know how to... Skein. I don't do yarn. He pulls out some yarn. There you go. And he throws it at the... Uh, at the, the one that's farthest away. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is preparing to run... Uh, and that's a tangle foot, so I think I have to spell attack, yes. Uh, nice. That is a 20. Solid hit. Yeah, awesome. So uh, is it a critical success or just regular? It is just a normal success. Excellent. It takes negative 10 foot circumstance penalty to its speed for one round. Okay. It can ex- uh, attempt an escape. Uh, the uh, vines kind of curl up around it, tangling its feet. No vines. It's yarn. Yarn, I'm sorry, just the yarn entangles its feet as it gets caught in it. Cat eyes go wide. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and you do have one action left? Uh, shield, of course. Weak. And uh, this Mitflit is going to kind of stumble and, and clamor. He'll have to spend two move actions. So you've saved Mocker an attack. Uh, and he's going to wield his sword, jumping out with a 16 on the die for a 24. Ouch. Uh, that will hit. Uh, for, ooh, max, five points of slashing damage. Yo. Um, and uh, for being done with his turn. All right, Corwin, you're up. You've managed to uh, avoid uh, mo- molestation so far. So far. Uh, well, we're going to look at this fella here who's uh, bothering my cousin. Probably the easiest Which, one to get to. Oh, your cousin, cousin, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. In fact, he's actually within range right now. He is, but uh, we're going to move to flanking. But first off... We're going to see if I can actually think I'm going to hit this fella real good. Yeah, right your eyes. Uh, that's a 13 on the die. We're definitely going to be swinging with that. So we're going to move into flanking and swing with a 13, which is going to give me a total of a 22 to hit. 22 to hit is a solid hit. All righty. That's going to be 2d6s a here. Hit. Plus a, hit. a palpable hit. It is palpable. And something that we forgot, uh, also last fight that I remembered after session and didn't bring up, uh, this blade is cold iron, if it matters. Uh, it, it does, actually. I did not realize it was Cold Iron, but yes, yeah. yes, that's Ooh, right. Oh, that is, is dead. he's dead. That is two sixes, uh, so that is Max 16 damage, damage 16, yeah. plus Cold Iron. Okay. <laughs> His bones are gone. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> you deleted him. This is just, a short sword, right? Yeah, just move up behind him, set a hand on the head, and just, I'm real sorry about this, bud. 
And the, the blade, Mocker will see the blade come out of the Mitflit's mouth uh, before being driven uh, high up. And the wounds actually cauterize slightly as the fey flesh reacts violently to the cold iron of the blade. Well, that's new, but uh, real handy, ain't it? Got your back, cuz. Oh. Uh, and I got okay. one. Thank you. One. Yeah. All right. And uh, all that three. was move, move, stab, move. Yep. yep. Drevin, you're up. So they both came over and tried to poke me, and then one died, but the other one I mean, they did, did poke me, and he's not dead. Correct, yes. Sorry, I didn't take him out of So we gotta fix that. Just looking down at this one in particular as I shift my grip and just kind of, like, flat of the top of the hammer down and smash it. Okay, sounds good. Like you turn the hammer upside down? Well, yeah, that's, that's the problem. Is, okay. That's what you do. Oh, no, I can use this. Yeah. The oh. hammer swings the other way. He's hero pointing yeah. it. Yeah, because that was two, a on, two the die. on the die. <laughs> I don't think an 11's going to hit, so. So I think that a 14 might. A 14 might. Uh, but uh, it, it's actually quite spry. It's going to leap away, and that massive head of the hammer will smash into the dirt under its feet. Well, then from there, we're going to shove it up into it as it's backing off mm -hmm. and go for a second swing. swing. What is the what is that game where the, you get the little balls? That... And that will be a three. So that's nah. only going to be like a six. Yeah. Uh, you throw a, a lot of dirt around, but the midflits are pretty spry and it's it's right up on you. It's 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 stuck you in the grieve a couple times. So it's uh it's working it in there. Stabbing you I'm going to let go and lay on hands. Okay. Heal yourself for a little bit. And get some bonus AC. Croquet was the word I was looking for. Oh, I thought you, you I saw your, your motion. I'm like, the cup and ball game? Uh, That's, croquet. croquet uh, like he's croquet. He's like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's fine. It's, it's fine. It's, it's gone. I thought you were talking about the ham sandwich. The ham sandwich. <laughs> no, he's, ha he's giving them the ham sandwich. It's, it's, <laughs> oh. it's a croquet madame. Stop making me hungry. <laughs> now I want pickles. That was a long walk for that joke, y'all. No, I uh, appreciate it. The mid flit, <laughs> delicious. Uh, is uh, this is the one that uh, uh, that's trying to flank? Uh, that's been trying to flank uh, Drevin. He's gonna see you kind of heal her in. It's like, ah, no good, no good. And try to stab in with some well extra mid flitty force for a cock die. That's cute. For a uh, fifteen. Almost. Almost. So let's try again, but harder this time. Uh, that's going to be... Once more with feeling. Yeah, it's agile. It's an agile thing. So that's going to be only... Uh, that's 20, actually. Oh, if I hadn't laid on hands. That's it's true. Miss. You have like plus yeah. two status to your AC right now. It doesn't know how hard you are to hit right now. So I'll fish for 20, and I don't get it. Uh, yes. So he's going to... Kang, 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 kang. Blinded by the light of Saren Ray. And Mocker, you've got one right in front of you. Uh, Mocker will take a look at this thing and attempt to divine its greatest weakness. Go for it. Again. Again. <laughs> well, it's a new one. You got to roll more one. than a four this time. No, man. <laughs> the other one died. Technically, he doesn't have to. There oh, go. there we go. It's a 19 on the die. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a critical success. Um, this thing, uh, you can actually, because of its fey nature, it actually has a weakness to cold iron. But its fey magic, its blood is very, very, it's weak. Its blood itself is very weak. So using the cold iron filings you have in your pocket would only cause an additional two damage per hit. Um, however, you do notice that this thing is favoring its right leg a bit, where it is st it has stubbed its toe on a sharp rock. So you think aiming attacks there might be able to do more damage. Because of that yarn. Um, so Mocker will actually dip under him and come around uh, to flank him yep. so that he can better access his side, uh, the side that I want, and he'll come in and he'll try to make a stab at that side. Awesome, roll for it. I can't believe the Thaumaturge realized this monster was anemic. <laughs> his blood is weak. His blood, look, I tasted it. He's, There's no iron in that thing. It's technically a fey. <laughs> Uh, that's going to be a filings. five on the die uh, for a total of a 13. A 13. Because you flanked it and also because it's tripping over all this yarn that's tied around it, it's a <laughs> solid hit. Yeah. Yay. Uh, that's going to be uh, a four, which is going to be 12 damage. Bomber churches, man. Uh, you uh, slash through this thing. You you take the the leg off at the knee, uh, and it falls over and quickly goes still from shock. Weak indeed. Uh, Calbum, what you want to do? Uh, Calbum 
Uh, can he see the one that's attacking? Uh, 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 not from where you are. You're going to have to come into the room, although it certainly looks like your companions have it well in hand. There's also a big knoll in the way. I mean, I'm little, though. I'm a tiny no, just little. No, like between you and no, the guy. I, I, no, no, I know. I mean, I, I get that. Uh, <laughs> I am in no danger here. Uh, he, yeah, I'll step in. Uh, I'll take that five-foot step in. And now you can you can see on the other side of Drevin, he's trying to trying to stick the, the short sword, trying to find purchase in the legs. Although once you come in, the Mitflet's eyes look at you and then narrow evilly. Great. I take my laser and I put it inside for a uh, spell attack roll real mm-hmm. quick. You fooled. Uh, You've narrowed your eye. <laughs> yeah, right? You gave me a... Uh, yeah, I'm going to roll the deck. Uh, I'm going to re-roll this from... Uh, uh, thank you for Scott. Hero point. Yeah, hero point. I'm going to roll this other one instead. Uh, for worse. Great. Uh, let's see. 5 plus 8 is 13. I imagine that's going to miss. 13 yeah? adjustment. It's only wearing rags, but it's it's fairly spry. Man, would, would a 15 have hit? 15. Totally should have kept that <laughs> 7. Dang it. A 15 would have done well, it. Well, I, tr- I do I do go for the eyes, but uh, but I am Well, you do go for the eyes, but he blinks and shrinks away. Yeah, yeah. What's Corwin doing? Uh, well, there's only one fellow left here, so... Your buddies are all dead. You don't got to keep fighting. And he's just going to move his way up, uh, going to devise on his way over to flanking. You can actually get there with one move action. Yep, exactly there. Oh, that's a 16 on the die. This fella's going to feel it. Yeah. Uh, it's so your you choice, fella. Left. Just as he's walking up, just, your choice, you going to do it or not? Uh, it looks like this Mitfleet is currently distracted with the thought of sticking your wizard with a sword. Well, he's getting stabbed then. That's what you get. Two fives. That is 10, 14, plus cold iron weakness. You have devised him to death very nicely. Just, again, just a hand, the open hand on the head, just real sorry, just to blow right in there. <laughs> and you did a, at a diagonal cut takes the, the head down, after aided that, by the cold iron. After that happens, uh, Callum's just going to take his laser pointer and continue to flit it about the room so that uh, Spork has some has some uh, enrichment for his and for, and for Spork brain. is quite agile, running uh, literally up the wall in hemicircles, chasing this uh, this yeah. light. Yeah. Um, and the the room falls silent, although surely the boss in the next in room does know about you. <sighs> you uh you got a bit dinged up there. Uh, why don't we take a step out of here? Grab one of those. I mean, they're rusty as all crap, but lock up the door real quick, and uh, I can take care of. Those stab wounds real easy. Oh, thanks, cousin. Might as well. Are they? Do they? Are they carrying short swords? Or are they carrying what would be considered a dagger? <laughs> well, it's a dagger to normal people, probably. Well, well it'd be a short sword to me then. It's actually a bit bigger than your typical dagger. This thing is has enough heft on one end that throwing this thing would be foolish. You wouldn't. wouldn't it's, it's not well balanced like a dagger is, but it, it's got some extra chopping power to it. So this would be effectively a short sword if you wanted to pick one up and use it. Oh, I'd be, not from me. <laughs> yeah, let's, it's uh, the general you. Let's yeah. all take a step back in the hallway here, and we can just block that door real quick. They ain't too strong, it seems like, so they'll at least know they're coming. All right. Give us a chance to uh, take care of that stab wound there. And I mean, they got your legs pretty good. I'll be fine in a few minutes. I'll take care of it. Don't worry. Good. I, I sense so many disturbances in this room. Now that you're actually... You have a moment, and you're sitting down to go and be tr- and, and be be taken care of. You can the the swirling auras from your um from from your thaumaturgical uh, forces here. You can almost see shadows of the Rose Guard uh, launching their attacks at Belcora, um, who reaches above her head before slamming the floor downward with a clawed hand. Uh, erupting the stone in a shower, and you see one of the Rose Guard fall through the newly created hole in the floor before debris chases after him to fill in the bottom of this pit. You'll see Mocker actually almost go to dive with his hand out before he kind of recalls himself to where he is and kind of pulls back and sits back down. Yeah, cuz we got a blood loss is getting to you a little bit there. Getting a little woozy there, bud. Why don't you go ahead and make me some treat injury rolls? Yeah. Uh, how hurt are both of y'all? Hardly. I mean, I've taken eight damage. Okay, so I can probably definitely deal with that. Otherwise. How hurt are you? I mean, he asked. I mean, I, I have I... lost eight points of health, Corwin. On a scale of one to your total amount of health points, about where are you? <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. Yeah. About... Uh, while that treat wounds is bonk. happening, <laughs> uh-huh. I'll just 
<clears throat> refocus and then lay on hands and I'm good. All right, okay. cool. Sounds good. I'm going to say, because if you're pretty injured, I can go for the expert check, but uh, I'm just going to go for trained on my cousin here. Sure thing. He looks so. like he has some scratches along his face and across his shoulders. Uh, that is going to be a 14 plus 9, so that is going to succeed on the standard check. 2d8. 2d8 plus 2, because I am a forensic investigator. <gasps> Ooh, fancy. No, hey, that's battle it. medicine. Oh, battle that's, medicine. That's the quick in combat. Ah, uh, Get hurt in combat and I'll heal you. She did get hurt in combat. Yeah. Uh, not vitally, so. That's an 8 and a 6 plus 2, so that is 16 health back. I think you're fine. I need to take the candy anyway. Nobody lets me have gummy bears. Fine, cause you can have one. Look, it ain't gonna make you feel any better. Bandage you up the best I can, but Mocker look, looks really so excited. The, look, it'll help with. I mean, you got some mud in there from whatever was on that blade. It'll help with whatever the infection's gonna come on. Counting cc's of blood. Look, lumberjacks complain a lot, and when you get tired of hearing, "Oh, the medicine tastes bad," well. You make it taste like candy, and they shut up about it. It is candy. No, it's so medicine. The uh, battle you got you got candy. the placebo. You get some Flintstone gummies. <laughs> placebo. Um, you take a free moment, uh, despite the fact that apparently the uh, the boss knows you're here. Uh, no one made it out of the room to report you, so apparently no one's sending out patrols for some reason. So it seems as though you're you basically are unmolested during this time that you're here. Uh, while you're here looking around, uh, you can tell uh, Corwin with your that's odd uh, that this this room here, much as Mocker is seems to be experiencing this spiritually, you can see evidence of it uh, before your eyes. Um, the floor was blasted downward with a powerful explosion. Uh, Calvin, looking at this, can definitely tell that this was powerful magic that was used to to collapse the floor, uh, and that the uh, subsequent gap that was presumably down to the lower levels perhaps has been filled in with debris over the years you could probably dig your way down but it, it would be no faster than just going out to the swamp and digging your way down i mean i never figured just looking at this uh you said they went down right cuz somebody fell to his doom one of the rose guard in the fight against balacora i don't think it's doom so much as they went further down. I think this place got more than just the lighthouse here. Now, I read some stories about... It. They, got, they got all kinds of levels in this thing. They got levels they ain't even telling you about. Levels on levels on levels on levels on levels. At least that many levels. Whoa, Squiddish with a raid! 38 people! Hey. Welcome, welcome! <laughs> Hello, Mr. John UGT. <laughs> you well. do know that when you get down enough levels, you just end up back where you were. I do know that. <laughs> what kind of books have you been reading? Well, uh, none one. is in here. Well, it's impressive they went down in the swamp of all places. Here, yeah, I, got, I got this one. It's called Levels on Levels on Levels. You should read this. This place didn't... It wasn't always a swamp. It's just the player guide. <laughs> <laughs> levels on levels on levels. This place, it used to be something different. Yeah, it was her uh, hideout, but I mean, I didn't, I've heard stories about this place, plenty about it, or, you know, everything she was planning and whatnot, and Rose Guard stopping them, but well, I mean, I thought it was just like the lighthouse and this whole keep around it, but... Well, that's what they want you to think, man. That means it's good cover oh if God, she got no. more to do. <laughs> they they, okay, won't, they, the want you, they want you to think it's just a lighthouse, but there are levels on levels here, man. I mean, fair Going enough. real deep. Uh, we still got this uh, boss fella that, well, thankfully ain't come bothering us none, so at least he's smart enough to not charge into his death. Upon realizing that uh, Calvin is the closest to the door, he's going to immediately run into the corner over there. <laughs> well, we're, we're probably going to him because he yeah, ain't no, coming no, to Yeah, no, no, I know, us. but I'm, I do not want to be anywhere near where the where the doors will open and I am the first target. Such a good wizard. <laughs> yeah, this is how you no, play a wizard. You. <laughs> Anything that looks remotely dangerous. He just crawls between your legs, certainly between your legs. I'm going to go on ahead and walk over to the door then and politely knock. Uh, you knock on the door. There is no response. With your hammer? No, not yet. Okay, good. <laughs> I'll give it about 20 seconds. Okay. Well, they, they, they pass. And just get and Then I'll try and open the door. Is door it real? Uh, the door is, in fact, real. That's what they want. Cool. Door opens. Uh, you open the door. Beyond is not the room that you were expecting. It's actually a bridge that extends out over the swamp. You can kind of look left and right and see the swamp um, through sort of a 
It's a fortified bridge that goes to that outcropping on which another guardhouse was stationed where you saw the first Mitflit uh, flee to to uh, alert the boss. And standing imposingly in the center of this um, bridge would be what appears to be an armored skeleton that's standing in a head down very sentry-like position with a, a morning star uh, upside down in its hands on guard facing you guys as you open the door this imposing sight strikes you the face is skeletal this is a skeleton in armor that is frozen stiff just facing you with death's eyes I'm gonna get up beside our friend here towards the door as he's going to open it it doesn't react to you all that uh I mean you you seem to be the sort that would know about it ain't moving. Is it waiting for challenge or something? I heard if we check, maybe they'll drop that morning stuff. There's no telling. Just still got this rock mm-hmm. that he threw at me. Just kind of throw rude. it at the skeleton. Um, the rock strikes it square in the head, which kind of cucks to the side, rolls and falls off of it. The rest of it just keels over to one side and with a loud clatter kind of collapses onto the bridge. It looks like it was just a skeleton. And as it falls over, you can see the armor has been filled in with moss and dirt and sticks to kind of keep it erect. The Morning Star, though, seems to be real uh, and is actually looks in really good condition, seeing as how it's just kind of been sitting here on a bridge. I'll go well, that was easy. I'll um, go pick up the Morning Star. I always heard Tail Undead oh, you're were. cursed now. I heard Undead were tough to deal with. I mean, that was real simple. I'm going to say that was not an Undead. Well, it's a skeleton, ain't it? It doesn't mean it's an Undead. Read psychometric resonance on the morning star? Skeletons are made from undead. Um, The morning star, the resonance on the morning star is pretty slim. Uh, It doesn't seem like this morning star was in any type of really long or drawn out battle. It looks like this thing was like most weapons. Built, manufactured, carried around, and not really ever used. However, you looking over, it does seem to be in quite good condition. The hand, the handle of the Morning Star appear, appears to be uh, some sort of oiled hardwood. The head of the Morning Star is actually spiked steel, and as you're turning it over, you can see that between the spikes, a rune has been etched. A very tiny, simple rune uh, has been etched into the Morning Star. Oh, huh. I could figure out what that Jeff? is later. Hey, you know what I have now? This Quick is, identify. This, this is magic. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Oh, there you go. I'll take oh it. Oh my god, another raid. Another raid party. Hey. Mono oh, Mono here. Hey. Oh, nice. Okay, mono. now, oh my god. no one, fingers crossed, knock on wood, we've gotten the raids now. <laughs> no oh, premiere curse. Why Come did on, you bring that up? <laughs> because Mono was the one that caused it. Like, if anything happens, I'm blaming you. You can blame your me. Fault. Yeah. You brought yeah. this up. You did it. Hey, we haven't had issues yet so far. Shut up. Why? Why are you like this? He is tempting Stop. fate. Stop. Look, All right, anyway, yes, uh, you find you that otherwise. rune on that morning star. Yeah, if you, the, oh, it takes only a minute for you to quick identify. If we have a minute. We're, but on the other end of the bridge is, in fact, a pair of closed doors. I mean, I don't we trust have it. 10 minutes if you need it. Like, take your time. I need uh, it. They ain't coming out. I mean, we can take a break, but uh, I don't think, is anyone intending to use the dang thing? Because I ain't got no materials to move it. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with just carrying it and using it later. No, I got Lily on here, though. Yeah, just uh, we'll like, do that later. It's fine. You mind carrying it because uh, it's kind of hefty. Yeah. I'll just go on ahead and sat uh, like slash, sash it on somewhere. Tie it on. Tie it on, but it's not really tied on because I want it to be accessible. Sure, you stow it. Stowed, but not tied. Fair enough. Put I have his, ten put strength. I cannot pocket. carry much <laughs> into my inventory. <laughs> All right, and uh, the doors are before you. Uh, any exploration actions before you walk in? Scouting, recalling Seeking. knowledge, reading my books and detecting magic. I love it. Pushing the doors open, you are greeted to well the sight of perhaps something that you were expecting to see when you open this first set of doors. Uh, if ever there was to be a layer that the Mitflit boss would put together, this is it. Obviously, this was a, a, hand, a guard station at some point, but what you're seeing before you right now has been converted into sort of a makeshift throne room, as in there's a rickety 
throne-ish looking chair on top of a pile of debris, so it's higher. <laughs> and sitting in this throne is a, a mitflit, which seems to have much nicer by relatively uh, regalia than the other rank and file mitflits that you've seen in that it has like a little crown on its head that seems to have been made out of fossilized tree bark. It's holding a larger trident that, well, for a medium-sized creature, it would be just a normal trident, but it's bigger than the little stabbers that the other mitflits have had. He's got a beard. And he has a beard. It's a mitflit with a He's beard. Got a face hair. Yeah, exactly. Like that alone, that beard right there just speaks regal. Less football, more square head. Additionally, in the <laughs> room, you see three other mitflits, uh, one of which is directly behind the throne, holding it upright. Uh, holding the throne upright? Holding the throne okay, upright. Nice. It looks pretty Because it's so rickety. Got it. Solid. And uh, <laughs> sca- scanning to the left, something quite more imposing. You see what appears to be a giant spider with a couple extra pairs of legs on it <laughs> that's sitting there just staring at the both of you. A spider with extra legs, so it has, like, more than like eight? Like ten legs, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It looks like it has ten legs. Great. That's gross. Yeah. Um, Counting. <laughs> You, <clears throat> you, you come before me, adventurers from Otari, probably. And he'll he's lording over this area. And as you walk in and look down, you can see that the um, the the dirt on the below beneath the throne has been smoothed out into a plane. And you can see what appear to be little like buildings that seem to have been put in there with sticks and leaves. And there's even a large wheel reminiscent of the giant mill wheel from Otari. And you can see that there's other little pebbles and rocks that have little arrows drawn from the rocks off to the side, which is presumably gauntlet uh, arrows drawn to the town. Uh, like a battle map? If it, like if a five-year-old made a battle awesome. map. Is that? Is he speaking common? That a piece He's of speaking gum? common. You can hear. What are, what, are, what are you doing here? I haven't even done anything to Atari yet, and you've shown up. Well, that's probably why we're here. If you were planning on doing something, it's convenient. What? P- Not really. Pla- pla- planning to. And he kind of like drags his fork sideways and like kind of scatters the stuff on the map. No, no, why'd you go doing that? I was. A good first effort. It, it's, it's, it's just things on the ground. Don't don't you pay any mind about that. It's like a teacher. <laughs> All right. Now, my friend here, he's a... Uh, he type uh, the, the real defensive. Deliberate lie, by the way. <laughs> You'll get one. If you lie again, I will take you back to Artari myself and make you repent. Give me an intimidate. I'm not intimidating. Uh, I'll roll you are to him. I mean, you <laughs> to him, it. this is no intimidating. No one's going to say you don't mean it. That's a 20 total. A 20 total. On a 19. 19. Uh, he'll kind of like take a step back, uh, and you can kind of see his... Uh, it, it, he, he's noticeably shaken a, a, a bit as he steps back. Yeah. What? 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 What are you here for? What? What do you want? We're Look, trapped. We got. We came here on errands something about some weird lights and stuff going on from the lighthouse. We were trying to check that out and your friends outside went and attacked us without, you know, giving a chance to explain why we were here. Well, well, what are you here for then? Figure out what's going on with the lighthouse and all the whiffs and whatnot. We were on our way over and got trapped on in here by a whole bunch of them. The the, the place is haunted. Dungeon. Spooky. uh, Spooky dungeon. It's a spooky dungeon. There's lots of haunts here. You have yeah, to be careful. But it's been worse than usual. People going missing and whatnot. What are you doing here? What? I, we, uh, uh, and he's looking around. He's kind of trying to get himself back together again. Um, anyone who wants to can make me a diplomacy check to try to see if you can wheedle some information out of him, or you can try to intimidate to try to bully some information out of him. Why don't you calm down and see if we can't reason with one another? Surely there is information we have to share that can benefit us both. Could and I tr- I'll try a diplomacy. Could I try to aid with society, just like knowing they're what, like we've seen how these guys are operating. He's obviously a king. You'd how we to- could treat him to like make him more receptive? Um, 
you, oh, you know what? I, I could see it. You're kind of like with an etiquette kind of. Th- yeah, sure. Why not? Go for it. A me flit etiquette class. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a nat twenty. <laughs> well, that's and a good thing you got a nat twenty. Yeah, I don't aid. I don't aid successfully. Did you make it worse? No. Okay. Um, nat twenty on the roll. Nat twenty for a total of twenty seven. Um, kind of talking to him in a diplomatic way, addressing a lord. Uh, he'll kind of settle down and kind of sit on his throne, which creaks and leans <laughs> precariously like sure. before another me fleet goes and tries to straighten it. Very well, very well. You speak to Boss Scrog of the Mud Liquor Mitflits. Yeah, we were truly, we don't want any harm to come to. He looks at driving for a bit. All right, we were going to go and invade Otari, but it's not our fault. We've been driven out. We used to live in the lower levels. And some mushroom-eyed creatures came from even lower and drove us to the surface. And and there were some kobolds that were stationed here, but we, we kicked them out. And this is our place now. And we were going to raise insects to be strong again. My tribe used to be dozens, dozens. But ever since then, this is all that's left. And he kind of circles his hand to the few mitflits that are in the room with him. We hear need to move. This isn't safe. You saw the haunts. We're going to strike out into the swamp. We're going to go make ourselves a new home. Otari was going to be our target, but I suppose we won't do that anymore. And uh, he seems to be genuinely intimidated by your show of force. Um, I mean, if y'all were looking for a place to go, I know a little lady who's probably got some work that needs done on a fishery. The church she'll accepts feed, all who repent. She'll feed you. She'll house you. You might have to do a little work for her, but it'll be kind of a place of your own. The disgust at the suggestion is pretty palpable across his face, but his eyes kind of flit across all of you. Hmm. We'll never live with humans. It won't work that way. But there may be other places. But we have to leave unless those mushroom-eyed people come back up here. Well, if they were taking your territory before, sounds like they sure are going to try it again at some point when they need more space. Hmm. Perhaps... When he mentions mushroom-eyed people, do I know anything about that? It's a really rough stretch, but I'll give you a check. Um, I'll let you do society. I'll let you do... I'll do society. Do society, yeah. That's you to roll it or you roll it? Um, I guess you're trying to recall knowledge. Sure. Essentially, yeah. So yeah, I'll roll it. What's your what's your mod? Eight. Eight? Yep. So the Mitflit said that they came from underground. So like and that something drove them out that came from deeper underground. So that would imply a couple of things. One, this place has at least three levels. Uh two, that they were driven up here by something that lives underground. And the mushroom eyed is a little bit hard, but you remember that there are creatures that did adapt to live in the dark of uh, the under uh, uh, the dark in the caves that might conceivably have something to do with this. Um, if they're not some type of myconoid, uh, which you think is actually quite likely, Um, what comes to your mind is either they're going to be a a race that was down here or the myconoids that, you know, mushroom type of living mushrooms can actually um, infect other creatures with spores. That could also be what it was. Um, But for them to have something to have stirred them up to drive them to the surface, it does strike you as something that is a a bit ominous because when... Societies get forced out by other societies moving. A lot of times there's other bigger things that are forcing them as well. So there's definitely something moving in Gaunt Light Keep. Perhaps, yes, the runes say so. Perhaps we shall venture below 
and see what we can do about these creatures that have driven you forth. Huh. Perhaps if we can make space, you can go home. Huh. You take back Mudlicker's old haunts, and we will go there, and we won't bother you anymore. Or Otari, we promise. Seems fair enough deal but to if me. You, if, you can, if you can take those, those places back, I will reward you with, with a, a handful of, of shiny ju- jewels. How about you just don't well, I'll, try I'll, to stab us? I, I don't about, have those jewels anymore, actually. They were down below, but I'll... How about you just quietly go back to your home and there's no issues? All right. All right. I, I, we, can, we, 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 we can do that. I'm sorry about your friends outside. It's just uh, they were, you know, doing the stabbing and whatnot. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's, that's, that's fine. What is this more than an arachnoid doing the entire time we're here? It is sitting perfectly still watching you all. Hmm. Great. Well, uh, <laughs> you got, like, you got, y'all came up from down below. You know where going down would be? We didn't oh. explore the rest of the place. We pretty much came right over around here from the corner. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I saw the door with a big old X on it in the nursery, but I didn't oh, think yeah, we should go the... disturbing your pets. No, that's uh, the ghosts of the kobolds that used to live here. They're 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 back there. They're, they're just they, 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 they cause a lot of problems. They give you a really bad headache if you go in there. We just don't go in that room. Fair enough. Um, yeah, no, the we 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 were we have pets that are kind of penned around here. If you go in there, they'll they'll probably try to eat you. They they only like mitflits. Some of them eat mitflits too. Uh, but uh, they they definitely eat you. Um, and uh. So yeah, I just, we'll uh, avoid that. I'd, I'd avoid them if I were you. Uh, but um, yeah, the the it's past the lighthouse. The the lighthouse is, is kind of a thing. That's the spookiest haunt uh, that that we've got around here. In the building around the, I saw the little outcrop in a place with like a dock on it back there. Oh, there's another building back there, but we haven't really explored it yet. Oh, I didn't know if you were meaning it was back like just <laughs> behind the lighthouse, but where's the dining still in room? this part of the place, right? Is uh, where the way down is. I, I I think it's gonna be back that way. Yeah. Alrighty. Well then, for now, this might take more than one day. We won't mess with any of your kind, and you let us pass through the first floor. Uh, the boss grog kind of like looks at the both of you, kind of like nods his head. Okay. All right. You got you got yourselves a deal. We'll uh, try not to kill any more of your pets, but I mean, if they go trying to eat us. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I can't, I, I can't argue with that. I can't promise that they won't try to eat you. So, I mean, you know, that, uh, uh, yeah. You got, I mean, you got a big spider friend here who seems to be following yours. You got like command words for him. I can uh, give him a bite, shot. Bite. Yeah, no, bite, bite. He's, he's my pet. He's strong. Bite, bite. Fair <laughs> enough. He, he'll, he, he bites you. He'll bite you twice. Well. He's really good at that. Uh, if you, if you tried to fight, he, he, he would, he would bite you too. At that point, would he be fight fight? Oh no, he would just bite you. You would, he would bite you, and you would die. That's how that works. Mm. It'd be a pretty big spider. That can be some pretty big bites. That's understandable. We'll keep but, uh, it close in case the mushrooms come back. Oh no, bite bite will fight. He will do it. He will protect me. All of my mitflits, they will all die for me because I'm the boss. Does does, does, does he look like significantly kind of different from the other mitflits? Yeah, he's got a beard and a little crown on. Just he's the past beard. the puberty. He's, he's past uh, half, puberty. He's half an <laughs> inch taller. Voice, voice, half an inch taller. Invader Zim logic. Yep. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, if you got a command word, like if you got animals and whatnot, that you can tell, like, I, it makes them not kill you as fast. I, I mean, most mitflits try uh, try screaming and then throwing something else that they can eat instead. So, like, you could throw him. And then if you screamed, uh, then the bugs would probably eat him, and then you could get away. No, no, no. Well, this is this is our pet. He protects us. He doesn't look like he would bite many things. Uh, he because don't bite. He he's doesn't. He's not hungry. He does. Uh, I mean, how right could now. he be? He looks like he'd be real. Yeah, he's got kind of some teeth. I don't know. I mean, it's up to you. No, not really. They're they're flat they're... teeth. Yeah. Not intimidating <laughs> whatsoever. Real shiny. Takes good care of his teeth. He uh he got you know the he looks like he'd bite things better. Yeah, he'd than bite he real would. good. I do literally have a bite attack. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he, he got big fangs. I'm gonna say you've got that big dog mouth with teeth in it. So uh, he's he does the no no the this casties. is the highest puppy. But um, 
but uh, uh, yeah, no, we'll leave you alone, and you leave us alone, and uh, we're not gonna mess with Otari. Don't don't you worry about that. Yeah, fair enough. Hmm. And then you go below and you kill the mushroom-eyed people. Sense motive. Huh? Although we're not gonna mess with Otari. Uh, yeah, sense motive. Uh, yeah, go ahead, roll it. Uh, I'm gonna hear a point that I don't. Okay. That's, that's a three. <laughs> I don't trust this fella. I'm not super worried about I'm Otari either. That's a nine. That's going to be an 18. Yeah, uh, so you know that... Thank you, Saiyan Fox. Th- you're, you're thinking that this very well might just be a thing with Mitflits. They seem to be very easily bullied. And this boss, he's trying to put on a brave face, but he is 100% cowed. Uh, he is terrified of Drevin, and he's willing to retreat into this facade of royalty when... Mocker comes at him with this, oh, please, let's go and talk like civilized people. He seems to like to self-style himself like, I am an, I'm a civilized king kind of thing. But beneath it, he is very, very easily intimidated. And he has no guile left. Like, the thought of lying to you, because Drevin was so intimidating, the thought of lying to you, actually, it almost catches in his throat. And he just will just stop making eye contact. He's got, there's two, there's two other... Little dudes. There's here? three other little three. dudes, uh, and, and the spider. There's a spider in the corner. And what are they? What do they look like? They're doing right now. Uh, they most of holding them, the chair. Holding <laughs> yeah, the I mean, chair two of them are holding the chair. Uh, but one of them is kind of just like looking nervously at the boss and at you guys. Um, I mean, at this point, I'm not even like holding the warhammer. Uh, it's just kind of like on the ground being braced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, 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 they look, they look tense, but they're not. They're, they're, they're deferring to their boss. Okay. Let's uh, be gone from this room. We have other things to attend to. Well, we got uh, just one question real quick. Uh, we did have to deal with one of the maggots, folks. You mind if we use that to distract the other pets? It is kind of dead. Oh, might as well not go to waste. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah you want to feed them. But I mean, like, don't forget, screaming. You scream first, and yeah. then you throw it, and then you run away. Yeah, just like, ah! <laughs> yes, yes, that's it. That's how you do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they might eat you, though. They, they'll try. They'll try to eat you. Well, I'm just thinking we can distract one. Maggot's pretty big. We can distract one a little bit. Okay. It's all right. Slip on by. Like most of our family dinners. Yeah, there is a lot of screaming and then throwing <laughs> stuff. Ah, that's why you're so good at fighting. Okay. All right. All right. So honestly, the yeah, the ooh, the reunions, man. They they are always a treat. Between the Avastis and the Menemes, I'm not really sure how either of our families have survived all these years. So how do you get to the next level? Well, he said it's behind the lighthouse. It's behind the lighthouse. I'm I don't assuming know where there's that like is. steps or something. Are we near the? I, I don't. So if so, geographically, look, I'm not sure. So geographically, like, remember when the roof was collapsed, the lighthouse uh, extends well above the gauntlet keep, and in fact, above the tree line. So it's noticeable right there. However, um, you can t- it, it comes down into the keep, but it's it's a little bit hard. Uh, anyway, you have survival. I do. Put you up on my shoulders. Mm, not super great at it, but I do have. Survival. Just tell me what your mod is. Two. Two. Uh, yeah, roll it real quick. I would like to apologize. Yeah, that I don't know. Saying, Fox, that was Scott in South Dakota that gave me the hero. I, uh-huh. I don't Fox know anything. Gave me this. What'd you get? <laughs> I critically failed it. You critically failed it. Okay, yeah, very good. Um, this place, because it's all fallen down, the sharp angles you'd normally use, you would rely on to get your bearings are just not here. Uh, and so you, you're just a little turned around. You're not really sure where it is. But you can see the lighthouse. So it's over there somewhere. I could find our way around here pretty easy. Well, I also, can't. <laughs> as a point, uh, Rin did ask you to check the lighthouse out. That was yeah. kind of the whole like sure. why you came out here. Figuring we'll head on through and you know, he sits on the other side of the lighthouse probably a way through it. That's the direction that Nil was kind of pulled, right? I mean, in that sort of, yeah, toward the center of the keep, so. Alright. Best of luck to you. Uh, yeah, you too. And Don't get eaten. Leave. Okay. I'll- Follow driving out. So you turn around and, fall, and, and file your way out, having made peace with uh, Boss Scrog of the Mud Licker Mitflits. Well done. And uh, it appears that he has been so cowed is that he has sworn off attacking Otari and will and has decided to never bother you again. How's that, Paizo? We're going to social our way out of the Abomination Vaults. <laughs> Until we, we can't anymore. Until the, Until there, the golems When and we the find liches. the abominations. <laughs> Once the abominations come through. Now nah, we're going to social that too. We're going to vault right over them. Um, making your way back out, um, you find yourself in the main entryway again relatively quickly. Uh, and looking down, you can see the... Um, you can see that the the entry hall continues straight back and cuts a an angle. Looking around here, a few things step out, strike out at you that seem interesting. 
Uh, one is uh, Corwin quickly discovers an alcove in the wall. It looks like this used to be a secret door, but the the alcove has been actually beaten open and pried open with crowbars and hammers. Looks like it happened a while ago. Unsecreted. It is definitely unsecreted. Inside yeah. isn't really a secret room. It's more like a secret alcove. You could stand in it straight up with an erect back and still be brushing the walls of this alcove. The floor is fairly interesting to Calvin. It looks as though there is a circular pattern that's been painstakingly carved onto the floor. Into the in the alcove or in the reg the rest of the room? The floor of the alcove okay. has had a, a circle carved onto it that appeared to have been magical in origin, perhaps at one point. However, a quick casting of the tech magic shows there's actually no magic left. Um, but it looks like there may have been a precious metal inlaid in here to hold the magic. Apparently, treasure hunters came and went through this keep as they have done years, over the sense. generations, yeah. Yeah. and there is nothing left of this. This is floor one. So. Uh, but if you want to give me a quick arcana check. Sure. Do you want to roll it or do you want me to? Uh, you can roll it. All right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Actually, yeah, I do. There we go. Arcana starts with an A for everyone does. wondering. Uh, that is an 18. An 18? With a 10 on the die. Okay, very good. Uh, so um, you look at this, and you will recognize the smatterings of a teleportation circle. This is something that is designed to link to similar glyphs that can take you quickly between from one in linked glyph to another linked glyph. This glyph is non-existent anymore, so there is no bringing this glyph back without some sort of very extensive construction and certainly more powerful magic than you're able to wield at this point. But it does speak to the fact that apparently the under areas of this place were large enough that Belcora thought that this would be a worthy thing to include. Now now here now here's the thing. This is like a like an elevator. What's an elevator? It it elevates you. It it takes you from one place and elevates you to the next level in your brain. And then like, it takes your whole body and puts it in a different place. Like and then religion? your brain comes back to it. Like religion? No, different than that. Totally different than that. Like, like, to no. Like faith? <laughs> like, uh, like magics. So yeah. it just takes you somewhere else, is what you're saying. So it's a teleportation Yeah, man, it takes you somewhere else, man, to a different level. Why couldn't well, you? I like an econ. <laughs> I'm going to well, guess it doesn't work. Oh, no, it's no, totally broken. <laughs> they took all the... There used to be metal in here to held it in place, but, I mean, it's empty now, so... Plus, it's real tight in here. I mean, I, I barely fit. I don't think you would even be able to get in here with all that metal on you. You would be hard-pressed. You would have to inhale, <gasps> and then... Don't you mean, like, exhale? <sighs> yeah, yeah, for some reason. I guess we inhale because it sucks the gut in because you flex the diaphragm, but you don't. It goes out. Why do we inhale? Why do we go... Why do we breathe? Because we die uh, no. otherwise. You inhale to, like, brace for it, and then you exhale to get as much out as you can. Yeah, yeah. Huh. You know, I'm just thinking about trying to squeeze through cars in a parking garage and park <laughs> too close together. Come back next week when we explain the anatomy of other things. <laughs> so this is the Abomination Vault's the tax code. You know. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> this is how Bellacora paid for all this. Looking this down is... at the other end, at the, la at the back says, end of I this. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I did it. I do what I want. <laughs> The secret ingredient is it's crime. crime. <laughs> um, looking at the back wall, you can see a, a prominent door that sticks out for you. Let me just make sure I'm counting correctly. Yes. Uh, a prominent door that's almost at the end of its own little alcove. And this door, unlike the other doors here, this door is pristine. The walls that it's laid into are look like they were laid yesterday and the door itself it's heavy oak that looks it was the, the iron is gleaming with a with a coating of oil that was applied to it when it was installed the wood itself has been varnished and treated and looks perfect so there's no like two foot and under like scrawlings of mifflets nope hmm. not on that back wall on the way leading up to it, there is, but on the wall itself, Suddenly stops. there's it just stops. Now, there's nothing. There. If that uh, Morningstar tells me anything, that wall door and everything about it's big time magic. Uh, yes, detect magic going off. That was my exploration activity. Um, you have to worth. get within thirty feet of it, uh, but once you it goes off, uh, you get a ping. Boom! Absolutely magical. 
magical. Uh, uh, does detect magic give me like a, a school? It's just not magic. Yes, no. Just tells me magic. It just, yes, no. it's, 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 it's binary. binary. To get it's a light the, that comes on, or it's a light that doesn't yeah, come got on. It. To get the what school is it? You need read aura. Got which it. is you don't have to have like that. have the object itself, and you get don't strengths. I think once you get to higher levels. Yeah, like fifth yeah. level, you get. Yeah. Anyway, Del Cora's right. real crime was tax evasion. <laughs> We're gonna send the uh, the <laughs> IRS here. Time I got you. We are actually just <laughs> IRS agents. That's it. That's it right there. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, that one, that that door is magical. It's giving me a tingly feeling in parts of me. Well, I won't uh, tell you what parts because it don't matter. It definitely. That's odd. Clicks off for everything I just said about it. And your your readings, you can feel that the fight that was raging in this room, eventually you can sense the, I guess, the, the vile aura of Belcora retreating through this door and three figures chasing after her. The bad vibes. Hmm. The fight continued this way. Is it a single door or a double door? It is a single door. But, like, big. No? Yes? Single door. Okay. Uh, big to you. Well, Everything let's see if we can continue this way. Yeah, I'll may as well. I mean, and try and open it. Um, Drevin, let me do it. Stop, like, almost touching the door. Why? Bad vibes, man. Bad vibes. I mean, it is big old fancy enchanted door. I mean, it could have something going on with it. I do have Trap Finder as a note. And I have Haunt Finder. You do have Trap Finder, and you do have Haunt Finder. You're uh, not jumping any hazards without a roll, sir. You are not, <laughs> and well done for that. Uh, but you're going to, uh, you'll, you'll scan the door, and uh, what's your perception modifier? Uh, for traps, it is plus 11, because I get a plus 2. Okay. You'll look at this door, and it seems perfectly normal. It, it doesn't do any sealed. traps on it. It seems to be pretty, pretty solid. Seems like you rolled low. Nah, it seems more like the door is probably like, I mean, it was enchanted to keep whatever this structure is. I assume it's going to be part of the lighthouse or something because so, the thing looked brand, like it ain't damaged or nothing like the rest of this place. The door is giving me magical vibes or the the wall that the door is attached to or all? So you can, so you have a 30 foot circle. So yeah. if you have to exclude something from the circle, you kind of have to hedge yourself away from it to get it outside of your circle. Ah, I see. So um, it's, it's just like a vibe that way that something is magical. It's yeah, not like effectively, a, yeah, things yeah, don't glow in my vision. You can kind of try to hedge it by going up against the wall to try to get the door out of your 30 foot circle. I'll, I'll let you do some trigonometry if you want. You're pretty smart. It's okay. That's not as no important. math. Yeah. <laughs> it's like running around, writing notes. Mocker will take his ring that's on this hand and he'll actually turn it around. There we go. And then he'll go to open the door. And you go to open the door and it Fireball. is stuck. <laughs> You're gonna have to really like lean your shoulder into it, try to force uh, this thing open. He'll lean his shoulder in and he'll go and he'll brace himself and he'll kind of try to push. Give me an athletics check. Yeah. We athletics it right out of the yeah. uh, dice. Tray. The downsides of no felt is they. Uh, it's gonna be a 17 jump. with a 10 on the die. 17 with a 10 on the die. It budges oh so slightly. But it doesn't move. It doesn't open. We uh, may need our big friend here to help with that. If you ain't got it there, cuz. Do you want to assist? <sighs> Fine. Or I'll assist you. <sighs> Just consider the door uh, evil. And that's going to be 22. 22. Uh, Draven's going to come up next to you, and he's going to smash his much larger frame into it. And with a screech, creak, this door will boom, fall inward. I and loosened it. Yeah, you loosened it. You <laughs> right, loosened thank it up you. Front. Yeah. Um, and you will find yourself standing into a perfect circular room that, for all intents and purposes, looks like the base of the gauntlet. Um, the center of the room is particularly noticeable because there is a what appears to be a fresh blood stain on the floor. Your senses are screaming at you. You can oh. feel the fight that took place here. Belcora standing in the center, launching the lasts of her magic while the Rose Guard surrounded her, and of one figure wielding a sword, taking a, a strong hit, uh, driving it, driving the sword in. Uh, Belcora's form arching in a scream that seems to erupt upward and then 
violently be pulled downward. Um, your as as Belcora f- collapses onto the floor before fading away from your vision, le- exactly in the spot where this blood stain was. You actually hear an almost unearthly scream come out of his throat, and a little bit of an after image of a woman before it's sucked back down into him as he seems to be able to get a hold on of himself. You doing all right there, cuz? I'm sorry, this place has so much of our family's history, and it seems to be affecting me more deeply than even usual. Look, if you got ghosts in your blood, I can't do much about that right now. <sighs> it's it's how the kitchen. Ghosts in the blood. Um, why don't, uh, I, so, I, I sorry, Trap Finder is not a secret check, is it, right? Uh, it's, or is it a secret It check? gives me a role if I am not searching, gotcha. which I am. Um, hey, why don't you have Altamok uh, roll a perception check? With your uh, haunt, haunt finder. bonus, more than meets the eye. Hopefully, gaunt finder. Uh, so I'm gonna take one of these here. Uh, That's a good choice. Zero point cards. <laughs> there you go. With that four <laughs> on the die, uh, we don't we don't tolerate that sort of thing up in here. No. Just roll better. Every time I've every time I've used a hero point tonight, it's rolled worse. Hey. I will take that. Thank that you for balancing isn't... out the average for everybody else. Uh, so that is an 11 on the die uh, with a plus uh, 7 is going to be an 18. Uh, did you count your plus 2 for... Oh, 20. 20, okay. You sense um, as your vision fades away, Belcora's malice doesn't fade with it. It just slows to a low constant. And you kind of blink for a minute and you realize that even though you're in present and your vision has ended, the malice is still here and it seems to be emanating from the center of the room. She hates us. Well, yeah, our great grand folks and such did kind of murder her and she wasn't the nicest to begin with. Um, The rest of the room as you take it in is entirely featureless except for a spiral staircase that runs around the walls of the room and extends upward 90 feet. Um, This can only be the interior of the gauntlet. Have we officially gone inside this room yet? Uh, No, you haven't, but you can knock the door in. Yeah, Yeah. I'm like, Like, "Mm." you knock the door in and you're just looking in. And then you look up, you see this go 90 feet up to the roof where presumably it exits into the cupola of the gauntlet tower. I mean, I doubt that whatever was taken nil took him up there, but it's possible, and we kind of lost sight of him. Yeah, we have Things to at real least big. look. It did I'm go s- real high, I'm weirdly. I'm going to walk into so, the room. Okay. I haven't been told not to. No, he's. you're fine. Just stay close to me. Okay. Um, you will walk in, and as you walk in, the blood starts to bubble. Oh, that ain't good. It kind of bubbles and steams and it pulls up and it coalesces into the figure of a woman kind of pushing herself up out of this pool of blood uh, covered like you ever seen Carrie from Stephen King that level of covered before flinging the head back the hair spraying this blood which seems to vanish into spectral mist um, before turning a face to Drevin, her eyes are pits, blackened pits, and her mouth hangs low uh, as though the jaw muscles are cut. And this gaping, this gaping visage presents itself to Drevin and screams at him. And as she screams, her eyes and mouth glow with this blue light, reminiscent of the light you saw around Gauntlight that then spears out directly towards Drevin. That's going to be initiative for everyone. With a scouting bonus. Yes, with a plus one. Ooh, that's real nice. Nice. Let's start with Calvin. He rolled a 19 on the die, which means he got a 26. 26, all righty. And uh, let's go to Altamok. Uh, I got a 14 on the die, which is going to make it a 21 with scouting. 21 with scouting. What's Drevin doing? 15. 15. I'm looking. My eyes are working. 
I didn't roll snake eyes again. On well, this, uh, I got a 17 on the die. So that's a 29 total 29 of scouting. up here. Speedy boy. Speedy boy. So the first thing that happens is that Drevin is speared by this blue light. Um, why don't you give me a fortitude save? Oh, no. Not my best save. <laughs> well, uh, 13. Total? Yeah. I got a five. Uh, okay. Well, there's 20 faces on the side of this 20-sided <laughs> die. As it turns out, you're just as likely Sorry, to Sorry, I'm, just, I'm not used to be like, ah, oh, my best save. A terrible result. <laughs> like, We're only bit. level two. Um, so this blue light, um, you can almost feel your life force getting, getting siphoned away. And in fact, as this blue light falls on you, blood is actually pulled through your skin uh, to enter into the gaping holes in this visage's face. Uh, You're going to take seven points of negative damage, and you are, are, you actually feel stars in your eyes as you feel lightheaded from the sudden blood loss. You are going to be dazzled for one round shouldn't tell you for one round. You're dazzled. You don't know how long it'll last. <laughs> <laughs> Roughly one round. What's Corwin going to do? Uh, just kind of see this flash burst out and blood run out of Drevin into this weird blood lady thing. Um, I'm going to do a recall knowledge. Uh, would this get the bonus from my uh, investigation? Yes. About the gauntlet? Cool. Absolutely this would. Uh, what? Well, th- you would roll this. Uh, so what's my check on her? Uh, let's see here. We could go and use... This is definitely a haunt, so I'm going to call this a religion check. All right, that will be, uh, with my bonus for the investigation, it will be a eight. An eight. Okay, so you look at this. Um, typically, you could... Um, this is a, um... You'll kind of look at this thing. Let's see here, get an eight of that. Uh, you've never seen anything like this before. This Weird is blood ghost. really scary. Um, you do notice that it seems to be targeting Drevin solely at the moment. It doesn't have seem to be noticing any of you because only Drevin has entered the room. Um, you're, you don't, unfortunately, you don't think you can get a very good look at it from out here in the hallway. You're going to have to make your way into the room. Uh, in order to try to get a better look at it. But it, you can definitely tell that entering the room seems to be what draws this thing higher. Driving you get out of there, that thing ain't going to be able to follow you. It seems to be only in there. Get yourself back. And uh, just going to think a moment here. We're going to devise a stratagem on this lady. Sure. Uh, that's a 16. That's a good number. Yeah, if I hit her. The issue is I only have one action left. And I think you have your sword in your hand, right? Yeah, I have a sword and a free hand, so I don't really have a way to hit her. I was just like, I could do it, but I need... I... Yeah, just run in there. It's fine. It's totally well, fine. if I run in there, I can't do anything else. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. You're just looking at her, just, oof, this ain't going to be good. Uh, What could I do with this? I think he's just, he's lost. He's just like, I could hit her, but I, I don't know if it's going to even do anything. Uh, you, see, he, he, you end your turn paralyzed with confusion. What's Calvin going to do? He pulls out a little ball of balled up tin foil, crunches it in his hands, goes, uh, uh, and flicks it at the, uh, at the thing that's a telekinetic projectile. My nemesis, Boy. cat toys. <laughs> yeah, cat toys. There we go. Little did we know, Bella Spork uh, is nowhere near this. Allergy. Allergy. <laughs> no, Spork is not going near it. Uh, that's a total of 15 to 15 hit. um your your little foil ball is not doesn't appear to be wearing any armor it's just the silhouette of a woman um smashes through it spattering spectral blood and then the blood just seems to coalesce again afterwards she appears to be entirely unsolid and uh, your attack apparently had no effect Great. He's going to use the rest of his action to build a shield on himself. <laughs> I don't like it. Um, this figure turns again, eyes locked on Drevin, um, and just goes, <gasps> and again, you'll feel this blood get starting to be pulled out of your body. Um, give me another fortitude save. Yeah. That's way better. Cool. Uh, so remember the number that was last time? Uh, not really, no. Well, it's much higher than that. So that's a good thing. Twenty-seven. 
Uh, 27. Okay. Uh, you do 19s. succeed in reduce and 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 resisting this uh this attack. However, that was a 19 on the die. <laughs> um, the blood doesn't get hauled all the way, but it does get ripped out, and your skin is torn in many places, and you can feel blood start to drip down on the inside of your armor, soaking your gambeson underneath it. Uh, you have some persistent bleed damage that you're taking, my friend. You're going to be taking eight to persistent bleed damage. Oh, wow. A D8 or eight? Eight. So no damage, but just persistent? Actually, I'm sorry. I take that back. It's a D10 persistent bleed damage. You're a D10 persistent bleed damage. I rolled it now. We'll just, you roll it next time. Okay. Or I'll roll it next time, because that happens at the end of your turn, not now. All right. So, sorry, you're taking a D10 persistent bleed damage. We'll go with that. Uh, let's see here. And then... Eight persistent bleed, just solid eight. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's pretty rough. That's that's, I have rough. 26 health. <laughs> yeah, that's... I'd be dead in three rounds. I mean, just don't bleed for three rounds straight. What's uh, what's Mocker going to do? Um, Almost assuredly, this is the malice that you felt that was haunting this room. Uh, Mocker um, cannot let his friend take the brunt of this alone. Um, and he will almost, in a trance, walk into the room mm -hmm. and get beside Drevin. Okay. Pushing um, your way into the room. And um, I'll look at this thing and I will attempt to divine its purpose. All right. Um, I will let you use... You can actually totally use Esoteric Lore for this if you wanted to. I would like to. Go for it. You can also use Religion if you'd rather. I would not. Okay. Cuz, what are you doing? Things going to get you if you're in the room. Get out of there. I ain't going nowhere near that thing. It's our That's smart. It's our family's responsibility. That ain't her. It's a weird thing. We got to figure it out before we can deal with it. She's made of blood. Uh, it's going to be a 17. Uh, is this thing a... This thing is a, a ghost, right? Uh, this thing feels more like a haunt. This doesn't seem to have, like, the intelligence behind it. Do I get it. my plus two from oddity identification? Uh, does that work It's on? It's... No, that's a cult only. Sorry. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, 17. A 17? You look at it, and, um... You do know that haunts can probably be, uh, most haunts can be exercised with um, a, a successful ritual performed with religion. Um, an actual devotee of the deity tends to be the one to do it. They tend to be better at it. But anyone with sufficient knowledge of religious ritual can call upon a god to try to lay a haunt to rest. Um, there may be something else you can do, but at the moment you haven't figured it out yet. Um, Altamach will take his sword mm -hmm. and he'll almost, he'll run his hand down it and actually draw a tiny little bit of blood on purpose. Mm -hmm. Our family spirit, guide me. And he'll actually run in and attempt to lay the thing into her. Um, my sword does have spirit touch. And he's hoping that with the blood of the Rose Guard f flowing through him, it will add something to this, and he'll be able to cut it. Okay. Um, you'll rush up at it and roll me an attack roll. Uh, that's a 19 on the die for a nice. total of a 27. 27. Um, you bring your sword down... Um, and a bit of your blood on this thing, and you'll feel Naji, the spirit within your sword, um, almost, uh, s normally he's like singing about battle, uh, and he's singing about, you know, like, yeah, let's get him kind of thing. Um, you hear Naji utter a battle cry as you swing at this image of what can only be Belcora's spirit. And you've never heard Naji take a fight seriously, but this time it's different and Naji's battle cry mirrors your own. And as you slash through, you, Belcora's image recoils from the impact. And actually, the haunt doesn't scream in pain, but it's affected and it works. Roll me your damage. Uh, it's gonna be a seven on the die for a total of 15. 15 damage. Uh, the creature or the image of Belcora recoils uh, and even though it doesn't seem, you know there's no mind behind this 
it turns its face to you and you see rage just boil its way out of it. You can sense that it recognizes the blood of its old enemy enemies. Drevin, release its spirit! And Drevin is up. <sighs> I've been trained for this. And uh, taking a hand off of my maul, I will pull out a holy book mm -hmm. and just holding it up, start reciting prayers that I've been taught as I look over this thing, not sure which one would suffice, just going through the list of everything that he's been taught as a child, reciting daily prayers, sermons, and all those fun little things that get stuck in your head. Okay, uh, go ahead and uh, roll me a religion check as you attempt to exercise this spirit. And that will be a 14. A 14. Um, you start going through the books and it's, you know, morning prayers it's the meal prayer it's the prayer literally to beg just forgiveness. going through you're going a list through of it prayers. and as you're, you're flipping through the book and you're reciting them and nothing really seems to not, be getting not there. even flipping through the book holding the book up he can't okay. read can't read oh he can't read <laughs> <laughs> <They're from memory. laughs> he's getting some of the words this wrong. is all yeah this is all the stuff that he's been taught and forced to remember you're 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 you're, you're reciting these things by rote eyes up at the stair trying to trying to go and say the prayer um Basically, neither the morning prayer nor the meal prayer seems to have any effect. That's one action. You can try again and keep rolling down your list of prayers I'm if you gonna want. Gonna keep going down the list. Go for it. I know that this will work eventually. <laughs> Just go through his daily routine of prayer. That's not gonna work. <laughs> Is there a critical failure? That's I mean, two. It, technically, you can critical fail, but it doesn't do okay. anything worse than the fact that you you actually misremember the the noon prayer. You have to actually go back and correct yourself. You get punished later. I'm trying again, third action. That is a good 22. One. A 22. Um, you're not really sure why it took you so long to think of last rites, <laughs> but you come <laughs> onto last rites. Um, and as you chant last rites, um, you, a, a spark of divine energy seems to flow from the book that you hold in front of you and catch at these wisps of spectral blood coming off of it. And a, a hazy glow reminiscent of the morning sun surrounds this creature. And it starts to smoke and sink. And it screams, not as though it's being burned, it screams in frustration as it knows that you're stopping it. And it seems to be significantly damaged. Is that, an, is that an audible scream that all of us can hear? All of you can hear it. Trevin, it's working! And then I will take the eight damage you said. He rolled okay. an eight. There you go. And eight eight bleed damage as your eyes again swim check. a bit. Still bleeding. Um, your, the, your blood pressure stabilizes a bit and you're no longer dazzled. Corwin. I'm going to step up around here seeing all the blood Trevin is losing. Yeah. How hurt do you look? How, how much blood are we talking here, my guy? Uh, probably a little woozy. Not like immediate threat of falling unconscious. Still speaking legibly. Yeah, and he's shaking his head a little bit and blinking his eyes, but he's not swaying. I'm just going to step up behind him. This might hurt a sec, but it, it'll get you back on your feet. He's going to risky surgery. <laughs> Battle medicine, this man. Of course. I get my candy. Knife. So, <laughs> you're gonna, yeah. you are gonna, I will help you with my knife. You're going to take a D8. You're going to take six. <laughs> but I now, on a success, and I'm going for the expert check, uh, on a success, it is a critical success. Okie okay, dokie. Okay. And this puts me at a plus 11. So let's see here. That is a 14, so that is a critical success. Nice. You are going to get 48 plus 17 health. I'm mm. back to full. There you go. Okay. Because on minimum with the plus 17. 21. I don't even need that much. Well, there you go. So. Big ol' healing and... Uh, <laughs> oh, no, I need exactly, like, 21 minimum. Get you exactly, yes. Yeah. All the way back up. So. Get, you, get you a piece of candy. And then uh, he's just going to reach around. These things sting, and they... they they ain't the best testing, but they will get rid of whatever is going on there. Should put some blood back in you. Uh, and they're just these little, like, pills. 
that he just kind of reaches around and shoves into the mouth of the dog. <laughs> Give the dog your medicine. Oh, oh, having better. stabbed the dog in, in the, the middle back of the prayer. Yes. Snout, let's see, you don't spit it out. Well, no, in the middle of prayer, just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the damage is you're forced to swallow this. It just... All right, one action to get into the room. One action to force feed your dog a pill. You have one action left, sir. I ain't one for religion, but if that's working, I'm going to give it a shot. Okay. I ain't a devotee, but I do know my prayers. Uh, that's a 15 for also a 22. A 22, okay. Um, you are not a devotee, but last rites is something that can be said in tandem. And I've done a couple here and there, mostly for you know funeral services for those that dies out in the woods. Are you a devotee of Sar- – are you a Saranite, or are you a different – Are you, not you, a you have different religion? Mostly just like – he knows the general ones to Phrasma and sorts, uh, great okay. lady, you know. So you uh, you chime in with a Phrasman prayer, and uh, I it's... I have one written down if you want me to read it. <laughs> Fair enough. Go for it. Why not? Uh, great lady, take this foul soul escaped from your yard of bone. Her place is not here. Fallen by ancestors, she is to be part of the rest. Unwritten by fate and banished by your judgment. Let her rest in the foul domain she has brought upon herself. Amen, my brother. That's amazing. All right. All right. Yeah, no. I, I, I was going to ding you for changing gods, but you had a little that. That was great. I, like, that's going to work. I like that. All right. Um, she will recoil again, as uh, last rites are said. Uh, this time, um, a feeling of slight vertigo uh, seems to fill the room, uh, almost as though she stands on a precipice and you can almost feel the wind threaten to blow you off. And before she again seems to recoil from it, uh, slumping down, uh, barely moving her head. Her head is laying on the floor in the puddle of blood. Um, again, just kind of flicking eyes, twisting, but not able to bring the figure erect. Calbum is up. So religion checks and prayers get rid of this thing, yeah? Uh, it seems to be working. All right. I'm going to roll religion. Let's see what happens. I don't have a very big one, but let's see. No, I'm going to hero point that. <laughs> it's only one, one action. Of, one of them's got to work. Times. Yeah, that's true. It is only one action. And yeah. there's no there's no he, multiple penalty. This is true. not an attack roll. It's true. So uh, he tries to think. Of, he's like, oh, man, what the prayers, 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 prayers. prayers, prayers. Does Let Calum prayers. have a god that? No. Okay. <laughs> that explains it. He reads a lot of books, though. He reads a lot of books. He knows a lot of prayers. He just can't. You really remember one right now. And Thirteen he's Hail Marys. Really hoping that, that he doesn't remember one yeah. at all. Nope. nope. That's kind of like oh, doesn't. it's like I studied French in high school. Oh, really? Say something in French. <gasps> and then omelette du fromage. Omelette du fromage. That's Dexter's Laboratory French. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, so he struggles for three for three uh, actions to try and remember a prayer. No longer. Uh, it also seems that uh, shouting it from out in the hallway seems to bleed most yeah. of the effect yeah. off of it. Like, get going now, get! Um, Go on now. <laughs> this uh, creature is going to stare at the three of you in the room, um, and this malice is going to radiate out, and a scream will again echo within the confines of this lighthouse. Um, rolling and bouncing off the walls of uh, your ears start pounding um, mocker that hole in your vision again starts to stab into your brain oh. almost as though it's someone has driven a poker in your eye and all of you you need to make me fortitude saves stop uh, uh, everybody in the room or all everybody not not Calvin because he's not <laughs> yeah that's right I'm in the doorway 14 14 yes okay I'm assuming in the doorway still counts. It does. You okay. would have had to have get into the room enough to be affected by this yeah. in order to battle medicine him. Yeah, that's figure out. Uh, it's a 19 on the die for a total of a 26 with okay. my fortitude save. 17 total, 12 on the die. Uh, so that's a pass and two failures. I figured. Can uh, I, retributive strike, read another passage? Uh, no, because this is persistent bleeding damage, and it, uh, they haven't taken the damage, damage yet. Also, you can't read. <laughs> That's yeah, fair. <laughs> Chant another passion. Chant another That's passage. fair enough, right? Um, so this uh, creature's scream pulls the blood out of your bodies. Um, Mocker, your eye actually, um, the white of your eye, like burst blood vessel. <laughs> Boom. Red. And uh, tears of blood will run down your right eye and leak out of your ear. 
Uh, Corwin and Drevin, uh, your reaction is quite a bit more, uh, is quite a bit worse. Um, Corwin, you actually start to sweat the blood out of your body. Um, and within, yeah, like you are, you're staining your shirt. It's, it's on the back of your hands and you feel your, your head get very lightheaded. Um, as you, you just feel this blood just getting pulled out of your body and the same for Dreddon. I don't know whether or not it was the target. I was successful. Um, can I make it the target of my implements interruption? Because it, it does that count as an attack? It does not count as an attack. I didn't think so, but I at least wanted to check. Uh, no, 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 no harm question, in checking. Yeah. Uh, it's Mocker's turn. Um, Mocker um, will begin to recite his family's prayer. Um. He will. God, that family's full of itself. It has it, its own prayer. <laughs> of course, it's got we a prayer do. Book, you know, all, all you good. got Saren Ray right there in the library, and really right in front of Saren Ray. <laughs> Where you tend a rose, a thistle cannot grow. So our family grows, grows into the roots, the roots that dig into this ground, this ground that you will never take. Uh, it's a good family prayer, actually. I like that. Uh, and he'll go in and he'll make an attack uh, with his sword. Uh, Naji again will scream its battle cry as you bring your sword around. Uh, it's an 18 on the die for a total of a 26. Oh my god, on fire. Uh, the palpable hit. Uh, roll your damage. Uh, Altamok, blood running down his face, screams and he cuts into this thing uh, for a total of uh, 12 damage. And Gosh, with that so damage... damage. Um, on top of how weakened it has been from the prayers of your compatriots, what happens to it? Um, Naji's form will actually come out of the sword for a brief minute and grab the spirit and take it back into the sword with him. Kiss him on the mouth. Um, and... <laughs> The, the spirit and the sword will go quiescent, and whatever was in this thing has been taken back to where it belongs. The form of the woman uh, collapses into this puddle again as the spirit is ripped, of, the haunt of the spirit is ripped away, and you feel the spirit as it's destroyed. Um, Naji's spirit tries to claim it, but you feel almost with your psychometric resonance, you can feel the spirit slip away from Naji's grasp and be pulled downward almost violently through the floor. Um, the haunt is disrupted, but the spirit was not consumed. Um, the puddle of blood collapses, splashes, and then seems to bubble, rising once again into the air. First a droplet, then in clumps and then a stream of crimson rising through the center of the lighthouse, rising up and splashing against the ceiling 90 feet above you as you look at this eruption until the blood is a coalescent puddle on the ceiling of the lighthouse. And you see it start to shrink and shrink and get smaller before finally vanishing as it sucked through a trapdoor in the ceiling. 90 feet above you. No, we ain't done yet. It seems as though Gauntlight still has one final thing in store for you today. Look, let's get up there before this thing does whatever ghosts are doing. We, we gotta deal with this. But that will be something, my friends at home, that we will have to see on our next episode. It's already seven? It is yep. already seven. You're right, these should be four hours. <laughs> Can't do four hours. Four hours is so much. Join us again. I would do eight. Next week. We've done eight. We did. For our next three hour session. <laughs> Don't remind me. I'm sad. And As hungry. we have one final mystery to solve in the cupola of the gaunt light high above the swamp. Finale of Abomination Vaults next week. I mean, I guess <laughs> if you all die, <laughs> See, you the, all could die. I guess. The 90 foot tower collapses. I mean, it looks I mean that is like your whole thing. Yeah, you just I, collapse buildings. There you go. Yeah, I, mean, I destroy the stairs. We cannot go up. Yeah. Well, the. Oh no, I guess so. Oh, sorry, Ren. We don't know what's wrong. We call him Demolition Dog. <laughs> I thought the he was highest puppy. puppy has evolved into Demo Dog. 
<laughs> no, this is, that's his final form. No, Devil he's got one dog. more. That's he's what happens when you eat all that candy that he gives you. <laughs> this is actually just a power up. That's it. Rare candy in that bottle right there. Thank you, everyone, for being with us. Uh, thank you all to our patrons. If you'd like to be a patron, by the way, feel free to check us out. Five bucks a month get you access to absolutely everything we have to offer behind the scenes, planning, uh, shenanigans, and the post show we're, 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 we're about to do, and, and uh, other lovely chicanery, I'm sure. Yes, and that lizard there it is right over there. I mean, True Sheik's hiding back there. He is. He's hiding. He's always around True you. If you can't see True Sheik, you know he's around you. That's how yeah. you know. That's how you know. Um, he's there planning to kill When him. you can see him, it's probably a decoy. All of you have a good night. Thank you for being here. And uh, have a good one. see you next week. <laughs>